tatlo. So, good afternoon class. So, or good night na kung na-post ko to. So, this is, continue tayo ng discussion natin for CFAS. Now, ngayon lang ako naka-upload, naka-upload ng video kasi, as you know, I just took my law final exam nung Monday, Tuesday, and shit, who stress me. So, anyways, let's continue with our discussion. Now, we will go to P, uh, P, uh, Philippine Accounting Standard Number 8, Accounting Policies, Changes in Accounting Estimates, and Errors. Now, ano nga ba itong PAS 8, itong Accounting Policies? Basically, for me, this is one of the, ano, not, necessarily, ha? not necessarily hard, but rather one of the most confusing standards sa accounting. <coughs> oh, one of the ano, most confusing. Kasi, itong Accounting Policies Changes, ano, kailangan... Before mo tumatik, kailangan na napagdaanan mo na yung mga accounting standards ano beforehand like uh, yun, sa assets, sa liabilities sa ano and sa equities. So basically, dito sa PES 8, matut- uh, you will take this sa ano nyo, intermediate accounting part 3. So good soon kasi madadaanan niyo pa yung IA1 pati yung IA2 kasi sa IA1 as we have said, assets yan diyan. Sa IA2 mga liabilities and equities yan nandiyan. So, kailangan mapagdaanan nyo mo yun. Kasi pagdating nyo dito sa IA3, sa particular subject na to, mahirap to siyang ma-apply kung hindi nyo kabisado yung previous, ano nyo, previous intermediate accounting standard subjects nyo. Kasi, itong accounting policies changes in, eh, in accounting estimates and error. Dito kasi, di ba may tinatawag tayong consistency application. However, due to some unforeseen circumstances, kailangan palitan natin yung application natin ng standard. So, you will veer away from ano, consistency. Kasi magkakaroon ng changes because of sun, some circumstances. <coughs> Now, in order for you to properly apply those changes, you need to know the standards at the first place, di ba? So, with that, puna tayo sa learning objectives. Define the following and give examples ng changes in accounting policy sa accounting estimate and sa error. <coughs> Now, as you know, mahirap rin kasi, di ba? Pag consistent ka sa application mo kahit alam mong mali na. Para kang nagmamahal ng ilang taon na kahit alam mo nang hindi tama, kahit na alam mo nang nasasaktan ka na, pinanindigan mo, and the end, ikaw yung talo. So, sa accounting, hindi ganun. Sabi na accounting, ah, tangayan. Kasi ganito. Pag nakita mong may change in accounting policy kasi may, may, may nakita kang mas appropriate para sa'yo, di ba? Mas itinadhana para sa'yo or there's an account change in accounting estimate or mayroong kang pagkakamali, sabi ni accounting, okay, if that's the case, we can fix that. Oo, wag nat- uh, we can veer away from the consistency concept. Kasi, ang mahalaga kasi sa accounting is yung proper presentation. Proper representation. Na kung ano yung papakita mo sa users, yung kung ano talaga yung nangyayari, truthfulness. So yun, this is the, no, the prime example of uh, kailan tayo mag veer away from the consistency principle. Huh? Kasi, in the name of proper representation. So medyo ano ako ngayon, medyo <coughs> huh? pagod pa rin eh. Woo! And yung second learning objective din natin is we will differentiate between the accounting treatments of the following. Changes in accounting policy, changes in accounting estimate, and correction of prior period error. Now, take note sa subject na to, ah, sa topic na to, since we're nasa CFAS pa lang tayo, so don't worry too much about this, ano, this standard for now, for this subject. Bakit? Kasi sa intermediate accounting part 3 nyo pa yung poproblemahin, nandiyan pa yung in-depth discussion yan. So basically, itong ginagawa natin sa CFAS, as, as I have said in the past videos, no, na parang introduction lang to ng mga standards para pag present na sa inyo sa intermediate accounting, hindi na kayo mawindang kasi familiar na kayo sa standard. May idea na kayo at the very least kung ano about yung standard na yan. So, yun yung ano. So, don't worry too much about PES 8 kasi tinakot kayo kayo, di ba, na isa to sa mga most confusing standard. Huwag nyo man na katakutan for now. Katakutan nyo na yan. Oh, no, joke lang. Huwag nyo na katakutan. Uh, problemahin nyo na lang yan pag nasa intermediate accounting party na kayo. Ngayon, anong objective and scope ng P8? 
PAS8. So sabi ng PAS8, it prescribes the criteria for selecting, applying and changing accounting policies and the accounting and disclosure of changes in accounting policies. Changes, uh, excuse me po, changes in accounting estimates and correction of prior period errors. Na ito rin yung napansin ko. ba diba sa book nyo, sa book ni Zeus, ang kikita nyo, every end of the chapter, meron niyang disclosure. So, hindi ko nalalagay yun dito sa, sa, ano, sa PowerPoint natin kasi obviously, binabasa naman yung book nyo. Yung, basahin nyo yan. So, nakikita nyo na kung ano yung mga proper disclosures for each standard. Kasi, ganyan yan, class. Pag mag apply ka ng standard sa account sa financial statements mo, you need to disclose that sa disclosure. Sabihin mo, ay, the company supplied PAS, PAS, PAS8 because of some unforeseen circumstances that we need that the company feels obliged to change its accounting policy for this particular transaction. So, you need to disclose that sa PS8 and kung ano yung mga particularities na kailangan mo disclose nasa yun sa last part ng book ni Zeus yung before summary. Nandiyan yan. Lahat mga accounting standards disclosure nandiyan yan. Kahit sa ano, intermediate accounting books niya. So, ganyan yan sa book ni Zeus. So, what are the uh, so with that what is an accounting policy? Accounting policies are the specific principles, bases, conventions, rules, and practices applied by an entity in preparing and presenting financial statements. So basically, accounting policies, yan yung basis mo. Yeah? Specific principle, basis, conventions, yan yung dyan mo kinukuha kung ano yung ipipresent mo. Kung papaano mo ipresent. Kung papaano mo ipipare. Diba? Accounting policies. Accounting policies are the relevant in this concept. Accounting policies are the relevant PFRS adapted by an entity in preparing and presenting its financial statement. So, for the Philippine setting, PFRS, PAS8 yung, uh, PFRS and PAS, yung Philippine Financial Reporting Standard and Philippine Accounting Standard, yan yung basically prime example natin or prime primary pinagkukuha natin ng accounting policies because as we have said, accounting policies, layman's term, dyan yung basis mo papaano mo pinipipare, papaano mo pinipresent yung financial statements mo. And with that, ito, nakita nyo naman to sa, ano, first sa overview of accounting pa lang, no? nakita nyo to or sa, sa si FAR at ayun. Best itong slide na to. Philippine Financial Accounting uh, Reporting Standards are standards and interpretations adapted by the Financial Reporting Standard Council, FRSC, Kasi, nakwento na ba sa inyo? Nakwento, chicken. Natu nasabi na ba sa inyo na basically meron tayong dalawang standard, dalawang accounting standards around the world or worldwide. Yung isa is the one is US GAAP. May, may sarili sila doon. May sarili silang accounting standard na pinapalo doon. Yung isa naman is the PFRS. So, yun, may dalawa tayong accounting standard. Sa Pilipinas, pinapalo natin yung PFRS. Now, of course, since dalawang different standards, may mga differences talaga yun sila. But, as time goes by, yung dalawang standards na yan, yung CUS GAPA at yung PFRS na yan, inaano yun nila? Uh, sinisynchronize na nila yan. Paunti-unti. Pero at least may synchronization kahit na paunti-unti lang. So, yun, additional note lang. So, sa PFRS, may for our country itong pinapalo natin. Ay, pagod talaga. Oo, oh, isang oras lang yung tulog ko kasi continuous writing man. Like, shit. Philippine Financial Reporting Standards, then yung PAS, yung Philippine Accounting Standards, and yung interpretation. So, yan. May mga interpretation siya. Like, paano yung application, pa paano ginagawa. Parang sa batas rin yan, di ba? Kasi may mga interpretations rin. Yung mga implementing rules and regulations, yun. Parang interpretation yun. Yung, IA, yung implementing rules and regulations ng mga batas, di ba? Meron yun silang IRR. Yun. Parang yun yung interpretations. Hierarchy of reporting standards. Ito, nakita nyo yun ito previously. PFRS. Yan talaga yung una. And take note, gaya na sabi natin, di ba? Sa typical law, pag may conflict sa constitution and sa, sa law, uh, constitution and yung state law, ang mananaig yung constitution. Kabaliktaran pagdating sa accounting. Kasi pag may conflict, ang PFRS or ang accounting standard per se, sa conceptual framework, anong mananaig ang accounting standard? Bakit? Kasi ang conceptual framework, it only provides a guideline basis. Si PFRS, 
specific siya eh, with particularity. So, because of the specific, specificness and particularity ng isang accounting standard in pinpointing out, in narrowing the topic, mas preferred na manaigang isang accounting standard over sa conceptual framework kasi ulit natin, ang conceptual framework, guideline lang yan siya. Nakap- PFRS, yan yung hierarchy, yan ang susundin. Kapag walang PFRS or walang accounting standard it is applicable to that transaction or to that economic event, judgment basis na tayo. Papano? Hindi lang basta-basta na ay kung anong trip mo. Meron pa rin basis, meron ka pa rin guide kapag mag-judge ka na or kapag pipili ka na. When making the judgment, then management shall consider the following. Mga requirements in other PFRS dealing with similar transaction and the conceptual framework. Management shall also consider the following pronouncement issued by other accounting and uh, other standard setting body. Yan na. Yan yung sabi ko. Yung sa US GAAP. Pag wala sa PFRS, tingnan mo anong ina-apply ng US GAAP. Yun, pwede mong kopyahin. Pwede mong gayahin. Kasi other standing setting, standard setting body. Kung sa atin, it's the Financial Reporting Standards Council yung namamahala sa PFRS. Sa ano, sa IFRS, kung international Philippine pag na natin, ang namamahala sa US GAAP is the FASB, if I remember correctly, oh, FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board. So sa IFRS, sa IAS, kung, kung saan i-adapt sa Philippine setting will be PFRS and IAS or PAS, Financial Reporting Standards Council yon Pagdating sa US GAAP, it's the FA, FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board. So, yun yung mga klase ng, ano, mga klase ng acronyms hindi yung makalimutan kasi dinidrill yan sa inyo. Kasi accounting related eh. And other accounting literature and industry practices. Itong sa best example na itong industry practices pagdating sa mining. Kasi ngayon, wala pa tayong very standard proof na accounting standard para mamahala to govern the mining ano mining accounting oo kasi as of now if i remember correctly sa mining medyo may freedom pa yan sila mag-apply ng accounting standard nila kasi wala pang particular accounting standard to govern that or specific standard to govern that pero meron na ata ano eh Meron na yung intermediary. But anyways, maano niya yun sa inyong IAS, IA, oh, Intermediate Accounting 1 under mga around, ano yun, PPE siguro yan. Ayun yun, sa depletion ng mineral resources ata yun. Anyways, focus mo tayo sa CFAS dito kasi dito tayo sa introduction. So, napapahaba mga kwento ko, no? So, ito, scope of PAS 8, description, accounting treatment, And effect of adjustment. As you know, title ng PS8 is saan dito? Accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates, and errors. So, may tatlo siyang particular, may tatlo siyang ano? Uh, may, pat, may tatlo siyang scope. Una, si changes in accounting policy, changes in accounting estimate, and correction of prior period error. Now, pagdating sa changes in accounting estimate, change in measurement basis. Yan yung description niya. Measurement basis. Ano yung naging basis mo to measure that? Accounting treatment, transitional provision, retrospective application, if B is impracticable, prospective application. On the begin- sa effect of adjustment, on the beginning balance, if retained earnings, if accounted for res- retrospectively. Now, you can still remember, di ba? Sinabi ko sa ating oblikon discussion na di ba uh, na explain doon pin uh, prioritize ko na to si prioritize pero inexplain ko talaga ano yung meaning ng retrospective di ba yung retrospective na as if ganyan siya from the beginning yun yung basically tayo ano yung tawag ito yun yung basically basically yun yung idea ng isang retrospective application na kahit na sabi natin 2021 ngayon, tapos 2020 before, retrospective application, the assumption is as if ganyan na siya since 2020 pa lang. As if ganyan na from the beginning. 
So, pag ganun yung interpretation, magkakaroon talaga ng changes sa numbers mo sa inyong financial statements kasi papalitan mo yan eh. Na as if ganito na yung number niya, as if ganito na yung application, as if ganito na yung pagkakompute since the beginning. Yan yung retrospective application. Now, you can see bakit ko in-stress out, in-stress nung discussion natin sa Oblicon yung concept ng retrospective application because it is not only applicable sa law subjects but also sa accounting subjects natin. Mapagdadaanan nyo talaga yung si retrospective. So, ulitin natin, retrospective application, basically, the assumption is as if ganyan na siya from the beginning pa lang. So, kung 2021 ngayon, 2020 yung previous year, kung kailan nag-start, retrospective application, as if ganyan na siya since 2020 pa lang. As if ganyan na siya since at the beginning pa lang. Now, you can see, don't forget the concept of retrospectiveness. Ganyan kay changes in accounting policy. Kapag 2021, may nakita kayo, uy, parang uh, like for example, sa leases, di ba? may bago na tayong standard sa leases na kung saan basically nawala na yung operating list. Dalawa kasi yan dati. Ito, na, mention nga ito last time na. Dati, yung previous standard ng list, dalawa yan. Financial and operating list. Sa financial list, uh, medyo ano siya, may mga complexities siya sa operating list, chill yan siya, madali lang. Ngayon, basically, sa new standard ng list, wala nang operating list. Lahat na yung basically is financial list. Now, the thing is, what if the company nung 2020 was applying operating list? Pero ngayon, ala Diyos ko, wala na silang choice but to account for that as financial list. So yung mangyayari dyan sa changes in accounting policy, ang magiging assumption since we're talking about retrospective, di ba? Na kahit 2021 ngayon, tapos sa 2020, operating list sila, ang gagawin mo sa 2021, i-restate mo yung 2020 financial statements kung saan yung assumption mo as if nung 2020 pa lang, financial list na yung ginagamit ng company. Bakit? Kasi nagkaroon ng changes in accounting policy. Hindi nga ganun. As if from the beginning, ganyan na yung application. Ngayon, yan, ganyan. However, kapag impracticable yung pag-apply ng retrospective application, Don't worry, you're not stuck up. You can prospectively apply that. Ngayon, di ba? Prospective application. Mayan, mas madali yan intindihin kasi let's say March, ano nga rin eh? March 10, no? March 10 ngayon. So, prospective application, you will start in applying that accounting policy from this day onwards. So, napakadali na kasi prospective eh. From this day onwards. Eh, retrospective kasi as if from the beginning, ganyan na. So, pag impracticable, punta ka, uh, pwede kang mag-prospective application. Pwede, pwede. Kaya dito nakalagay, oh. Retrospective application on the beginning balance, if retain, of retained earnings, it accounted for retrospectively. So, don't worry. Tiris lang tayo dito. Huwag niyang problemahin ito masyado. Na pagdating sa accounting estimate, ito, favorite ko talaga itong sa accounting estimate pagdating kay PS8. Kasi si accounting estimate, napakadali as in promise lang yung mga malawang quizzes. Pag makita ko, changes na accounting estimate, yes! Kasi madali siya. Bakit? Prospective application yan siya eh. Oo, wala hindi mo naisipin to. Automatic. From this day onwards, pros- ganun na yung application. Prospective eh. Ngayon sa description niya, changes in the realization or incurrence of expected inflow or outflow of economic benefits from assets or liabilities. So, dito nilalagay ito siya, effect of adjustment sa profit or loss of current period and or current and future periods if the change affects both kasi prospective application siya. Kung kita niyo dito sa effect of adjustment sa beginning balance ng retained earnings dito sa PNL future. So, don't forget about this ano kasi pagdating sa TDs at ganito yung mga tinatanong. Ngayon, siyempre, pag may pagkakamali ka, ayusin mo. Pag may pagkakamali, pag, pag may pagkakamali ka sa iyong buhay, kailangan mo yung ayusin. Ganyan din sa accounting. Kaya yung pangatlong scope ni PS8, correction of prior period errors. Yeah? So, description niya, intentional or unintentional, misapplication of principles, misinterpretation of facts, and mathematical mistakes. Pag may ganyan, 
Tapos na discover nyo, siyempre ayusin nyo. So, mga ano, mga mathematical mistake na instead of eto, di ba? May mga pag mag-divide divide kayo for depreciation tapos nakita nyo June. Nag-start nung June. No, nag-start ng June 1, di ba? Tapos akala nyo, oh, half year. Automatic, ilagay nyo sa calculator 6 over 12. Pero yung nasa bed na kayo, matutulog na kayo, naalala mo. June 1. June 1. Oh, shit. 6 over 12 na lagay ko instead 7 over 12. Shit. Di ba, ganun? Yung mga mathematical mistakes. So, ganyan din sa company. Pag nakita nila, oh, shit. Instead ng 7 over 12, naging 6 over 12. So, ayusin mo. Correction of prior period. Error. So, as we have said, since ang pagkakamali nito is beforehand, so, retrospective application. Eh, kasi, nagkamali ka 2020. So, yung buong, ano, buong FS mo, yung malaking part ng FS mo sa 2020, mali-mali. Siyempre, kailangan mo ayusin yun before mo pa prioritize yung current period mo. Bakit? Kasi, yung ending balance ng previous period, yan yung beginning balance ng current period mo. Yung ending balances ng previous periods, yan yung magiging in, uh, beginning balance ng current period mo. O di ba? So, pag ganun yung nangyari, tapos may mali-mali sa previous period mo, eh di yung balances mo sa current period, ma- ah, mali-mali na yung pag mo kasi mali-mali yung mga basis. So, kaya kailangan magkaroon ng retrospective application. Kailangan ayusin mo muna yung previous balances mo, yung previous FS mo, bago mo puntahan yung current FS mo. Kasi, yung beginning balance, ulitin lang natin, yung beginning balance ng current FS mo, current financial statements mo, nanggaling yan sa ending balance ng previous period. So, magmali-mali na yan, di ba? So, kailangan ayusin mo muna yung previous bago ka pumunta sa current. However, if impracticable na, na ayusin yung nakaraan, na itama yung mali mo, then, you're given, ano, the option, prospective application, kapag impracticable, kasi, in, in those type of cases, kailangan mo talagang i-justify na impracticable na. Paano? Cost-benefit analysis, check mo. Yung, the benefit of getting that correction, retrospectively, is less than the, ano, cost of applying it, di ba? Cost of correcting that. So, Lagi mo, impracticable, prospective application, ganun. Ito rin, on the beginning balance of pretend earnings, if accounted for retrospectively. So, when it is, ito yung sasabi ko. Now, when it is difficult to distinguish a change in accounting policy from a change in accounting estimate, the change is treated as an, a change in accounting estimate. Kasi basically, parang nagiging ano yun eh, impracticable na yun eh. So, punta ka na lang kay change in accounting estimate kasi automatic HTPM, prospective application yan. So, pag, may, pag, pag sinabi ng problem, pag sinabi ng problem, siyempre, hindi lang ikaw, hindi mo choice yan na pag may problem dyan, tapos na nakagay accounting policy, tapos nahirapan ka, gawin mo na lang change in accounting niya. Pag, in real life, pag ano, mahirap ma-distinguish kung accounting policy ba yan, change in accounting policy or accounting estimate yan, Punta ka sa ano, change in accounting estimate kasi uh, laborus ang change in accounting policy. Mahirap siyang i-apply as compared sa change in accounting estimate. As you can see here, oh, prospective lang. PNL lang. Yeah? So, change in accounting policy. Now, an entity shall change uh, burp muna. An entity shall change an accounting policy only if the change is required. Oh, may dalawang criteria or may mga dalawang reasons. Uh, may dalawang independent reasons. Kasi nakita nyo or, di ba? O, oh, comprehension. Kapag N dyan, ibig sabihin both of them should be present. Pero pag or lang, either. Di ba? Tanda? Parang salo lang natin. So, an entity shall change an accounting policy only if the change is required by a PFRS. In this case, yung, uh, yung example natin sa leases, di ba? Pra kung previously operating lease ka. Kaso ngayon, sa bagong standard for leases, wala na. So, you are now required to present financial lease by the newly established PFRS on leases. Another reason, 
kung which will compel the entity to change its accounting policy. Number two, result to a more, rele- more relevant and reliable information about an entity's financial position, performance, and cash flow. Oh, check mo. May dalawa kang option. May dalawa kang policy na pwedeng apply. Tingnan mo. Alin yung mas maganda? Na will show a relevant and reliable information that will properly represent the company. The FS of the company. Yung ganun. So, let's go to no, some examples of changes in accounting policies. So, ito. Prelude, prelude lang. Diyo, prelude. Uh, ito, pagdating sa intermediate accounting part 3. Yes. Itong ito, mga examples ito. Isosolve nyo yan. Isosolve nyo yan. Pagdating sa IA3. Pero ngayon, just familiarize with the ano, with these examples. Bakit? Kasi may mga certain multiple choice problems yan na the following are the examples of changes in accounting policies except, o oh, di ba? Ma, except. So, pag mga ganong instances, maganda na mafamiliarize nyo itong list na to. Familiarize ha, familiarize. Wala akong sinabing memorize. And maganda rin na ano, kasi pagdating sa mga problems na nga to, ng tawag dito, ng PS8, may mga problems kasi na hindi sasabihin kung change yan in accounting policy or change yan in accounting estimate or errors lang. Hey, oh, may mga ganong problems. Hindi sasabihin kung anong change yan, kung anong pagkakamali dyan, kung anong topic yan, kung anong scope yan. Hindi sasabihin na kung accounting policy, estimate or errors. So, maganda. Analyze the problem. Tingnan mo, baka, ay, baka yung problem ba? FIFO cost formula? to average cost formula. Di ba? Ganun, ganun. Or, ah, change lang pala ng depreciation method. Or, or ay, mathematical mistake lang pala. Ay, oversight lang pala or misinterpretation of facts. So, yan. Maganda na familiarize. Kaya nga sinabi ko, di ba, na starting pa lang na. Itong change in accounting, ano, change in accounting, itong PES 8, makahilo siya. Oo. Kaya kailangan, makahilo siya kasi hindi mo alam, may mga problems na, hindi mo alam pa paano siya i-apply. Kung estimate ba siya? Kasi as we know, accounting policy, may retrospective siya. Si errors, may retrospective. Si estimate lang yung purely. Purely prospective. So, may mga ganun instances. So, maganda na ma-familiarize nyo tong, ano para makita nyo, ah, yung problem. Cost yung binigay, then sabi, fair value model. So, ah, change na accounting policy to. Sabi ng problem, ay, change lang pala sa estimated useful lives ng depreciable asset. So, accounting estimate to. Uy, mathematical mistake lang or may fraud lang. Okay, errors to. So, yan na. Familiarize lang. Kasi makakatulog yan sa inyo. So, ito. Mga some examples. Accounting policy to. Changes from FIFO cost formula, inventories, change in method of recognizing revenue from long-term construction contract. Mga ganyan. Uh, ano pa ba? Like, for example, ito. Di ba, as we have said sa inventories natin, yung last in, first out, yung LIFO application, hindi na ginagamit, hindi nisalaw na. Kasi napaka illogical niya, di ba? Na yung unang darating, yung una mong ibibenta. Na, paano na lang yung mga una mong dumating? Oh, bubulok yun, di ba? So, hindi nisalaw na yung LIFO. Now, may problema. sabi natin na 2020, LIFO yung ginagamit ng company. Eh sabi, eh ngayon, dinis alaw na purely 2021. So, papaano yan? So ngayon, required ka na mag-FIFO. Nga, since that is a change in accounting policy, kasi from LIFO to FIFO. Yeah? So magkakaroon ka ng retrospective application. So kahit na yung 2020 mo was LIFO, kapag ipipresent mo sa 2021, mag-retrospective application ka. Na as if, nung 2020 pa lang, FIFO na. Kasi yan yung rule sa changes in accounting policy. Retrospective application. No, ganun. Ito naman, accounting estimates. Alam natin to. Oh. No, change in depreciation or amortization method. Is useful lives. Visual value. Record allowance pertinent and collectible. Like, for example, dito. This year, ang application mo sa pag-depreciate ng asset was ano? Anong tawag ito? Yung single, ano, tiyan mo, yung basic na nakakalimutan natin. Yung simple, ano lang, yung simple depreciation method. Kung na nakalimutan natin. Ah, na. Let's say for example, ito, yung single depreciation method. Search ko ito sa, wala, tiyan mo, yung basic nakalimutan natin. 
yung basic nakalimutan. Ano yun yung sing ah, yung iba sa inyo sinisigaw na yung sagot. Sir, ganito sir. De O oh, sige. Skip. Ano yun? Ah, straight line. Single single ang iniisip ko. Single straight line depreciation method, di ba? This year, straight line depreciation method. Pero nakita nyo na, ay, ma- mukhang pabilis na yung pagtanda. Kasi may mga machines talaga na, at the first year, sakto lang yung pagtanda nila. Sakto lang. Pero at the ano, at the pag- patagal-tagal, mabilis na yung pag-depreciate nila. So, nag-iba na yung accounting policy. Like, for example, unang application nyo was straight line method. Then this year, sabi nyo, ay, mag-sum of the year digits tayo. Mag-sum of the year digits tayo. So, yun. Prospective lang yung application nun. Kasi that is a change in accounting estimate. So, from straight line, naging sum of their digits. Or eto, change in useful lives, di ba? Uh, at the first place, 10 years yung inaano nyo. Yung straight line method, sabihin natin. Na, pagdating yun ng fifth year, napansin nyo na, ay, papasira na, malapit ang masira tong machine dahil sa katandaan. So, instead of the remaining five years, ituloy nyo, gagawin nyo na lang na two years na lang. Yung kanyang pag-depreciate. Yeah? Oh, change the useful lives. Ito, errors, mathematical mistake. Yun. Instead na 7 over 12, naging 6 over 12 nilagay mo. Mistake siya na applying accounting policies. Nagmali ka ng pag-interpret. Yeah? Oversize or may interpretation facts. Fraud. So basically, yan yung PS8. Huwag mo nang problemahin. Yung problem solving yan, pilis lang tayo dito si FAS. Problemahin nyo lang talaga yan pagdating nyo ng Intermediate Accounting Part 3. And basically, ito ang mahalaga dyan. Familiarize yourself with this example, makakatulong yan sa inyo. So, ito, nag, ang itong hindi natin nagawa sa previous lecture videos natin na nakalimutan kong gawin, yung pag-answer ano, ng classroom discussion sa end ng book ni Zeus. O, yung pag-answer ng classroom discussion sa end part ng books niya. Kasi classroom discussion yan, so kailangan discuss. So, kasi sa previous semester, nagawa ko yan yung lahat ng classroom discussions per topic na di-discuss ko yan sa videos. Nakalimutan ko lang this, ano, this, yung previous lecture videos natin. So, ngayon, start na tayo sa pag-discuss ng classroom discussion sa last part ng topics per topic, tayo, per topics ng book ni Zeus. So, yung para sa mga previous, ano, yung sa mga previous Chapters na hindi natin na-discuss yung, ano, yung classroom discussion, isi-send ko na lang yung answers. So, ano to? Open your books and go to problem 2, classroom discussion of chapter 4, PAS 8. So, yung unang question, according to PAS 8, in the absence of a PFRS, kasi yung beforehand, sa previous, ano, sa previous semester, yung classroom discussion kasi doon is problem solving. So, yan, pakita ko problem dito, then isosolve. Pero ngayon, since si fast lang to, tiris lang. So, number one, according to PS8, in the absence of a PFRS that specifically deals with that transaction, management, anong answer dito? Letter C. Kasi, oh, in the absence of PFRS 8. So, sabi, si management, gagamitin yung judgment niya in developing and applying an accounting policy that results in information that is reliable and relevant. Oh, dito yun, no? Saan yun? O, oh, lumampas tayo, no? O, oh, yun, no? Man- management judgment. Basta kung ano yung pinakamaganda. According to PS8, a change in accounting policy is prospective, ah, prospect, is letter D. A, B, or C, whichever is the most appropriate transitional provision. Ibig sabihin, temporary lang muna yan. Pinat, parang, sa parang ano ba? Parang buta sa bubong. Binul kasil, instead na ayusin mo muna, binul kasil mo muna. O, di ba? Pinan, may pinatapal ka muna. O, yung buta sa tubo, instead na palitan mo muna yung tubo, tinapalan mo muna ng silan. Parang ganun, transitional probation for temporary lang muna. Retrospective yun, ayusin muna from the start as if ganun na siya from the beginning. Or prospective, kapag si retrospective impracticable. Pero yung end product talaga is si retrospective. Yan talaga yung end product. At yung si transitional, parang temporary lang muna. Yung end product talaga ng accounting policy is retrospective. However, if retrospective is impracticable, prospective yan, allowable naman. Pero kailangan mong i-justify na impracticable talaga. So, ilalagay mo sa disclosures mo. So, kaya nga D, A, B, or C, whichever is most appropriate. So, this refers to applying a new accounting policy transactions, other events, and 
conditions as if the policy the policy had been applied have always been applied no retrospective yan so according to PSA a change in accounting estimate is accounted for accounting estimate to so prospective lang letter C and lastly number 5 entity A changes in in uh, changes its inventory cost formula from FIPO to weighted average how should entity A account for this change by retrospective application as a change in accounting policy so dito yan yeah? hmm. so with that next chapter tayo take 2 so basically let's go to our next discussion PAS 10 events after reporting period so ano ba tong events after the reporting period first let's go to its learning objectives Una, define events after the reporting period. So, ano mga ba itong mga, ba mga events na makukonsider natin as events after the reporting period? Ano mga definition nito? Anong criteria kumbaga? Second, state the accounting requirements for events after the reporting period. So, ano ba itong events after the reporting period? Well, Nabubulol na naman tayo. So, events after the reporting period. Ito daw yung mga events. This or those events favorable man or unfavorable to the company that occur between the end of the reporting period and the date that the financial statements are authorized for issue ah, at the end of the reporting period and the date that the FS are authorized for issue. So, kung gagawa natin yan ng grap mga kapatid, ganito yan. Sabi natin itong 2020. So, itong December 31, 12, 31. Pero pag sa ibang bansa, 31-12 yan. Pero sa atin, pinafollow natin sa Amerikano, not month date. Wala tayong choice. Ganun ang life. So, sabi natin, ito yung ano, reporting period. Yeah. Yan yung reporting period. So, ending niya, December 31. Ngayon, continue siyan. Ngayon, sabi natin yung Ah, uh, saan dito? And the date the financial statements are authorized for issue, let's say that's April 15 kasi usually ganyan yan eh. Tax declaration. So, April 15. January, February, March, April. Pang-apat si April 15. Yan, 15. 4.15. Ngayon, ang pinapertain nitong events after reporting period, oh, di ba? Those events, February and February, that occur, that occur, bit, that occur between the end of the reporting period and the date that the financial statements are authorized. So, itong entire timeline na to, that timeline, itong entire time na to, ito, yan, you have to see events after the reporting period. So, take note. Just because sinabing after reporting period, hindi ibig sabihin na from this to beyond na yan, ha? Hindi ganun. Meron tayong maximum or meron tayong, uh, tawag dito, meron tayong limit. Ito lang yun. Between the end of the reporting period and the date that the financial statements are authorized for issue. Yun yung events after the reporting period. So, bakit ba to mahalaga? Kasi may mga instances na yung mga events that happens dito, between this mga events na nangyari dito kahit na after the reporting period yan siya may mga chances whether favorable man or unfavorable yung event na yun may mga chances na it will affect your financial statements dito ala ganun pala sir oo ala di ba sir yung ilalagay lang natin sa financial statements is kung ano yung kung ano yung ano di ba kung ano yung nangyari talaga sa year na yun di ba ganun lang yun sir Ito yung ano, exceptions. Bakit? Kasi may mga instances, gaya na sabi natin na, significant yung effect eh. Significant yung magiging effect niya sa financial statements na kahit na yung event na yun, nangyari pa. After the reporting period, you need to change that. Oo. You need to adjust that to your financial statements. Now, anong sense ng date of uh, authorization date ng, ano, ng authorized for issue, sir? Kasi, yes, yung sinasali mo sa iyong FS, yung for the calendar period, for the reporting period, pero, di ba ang purpose naman yan is to provide the information to the users 
eh, ipoprovide mo lang information to the users na yan when it is authorized to be issued kung kailan. Kaya may nandiyan yung limitation. Kasi, magpoprovide ka ng information sa users, yun yung purpose mo. So, yan yung time limit mo. Kasi after that, pag lumampas ka dyan, yung event, ah, invalid na. Hindi mo, automatic ha, tepe, huwag mo na siyang i-consider. Na sir, lahat ba ng events after the reporting period, maapek ito? Hindi. Hindi lahat. Paano? Ito na yun. Two types of events after the reporting period. So, may, may dalawang nangyayari dito. Two types. Una, yung adjusting. Yung pangalawa, non-adjusting. So, yun na. May mga events na will adjust the reporting, ano, the financial statements dito. May mga events rin na walang adjustments na mangyayari. So, yun. Yun yung pivotal, pivotal point doon or pivotal factor. Alamin mo kung mag adjust o hindi mag adjust Kasi baka nagkamali ka. Yung hindi i-adjust, in-adjust mo. Yung dapat i-adjust, binaliwala mo. Di ba? May mga ganong instances. So, take note. Dalawang events meron. Adjusting and non-adjusting. Yung adjusting, magkakaroon ka ng changes sa FS mo. Yung non-adjusting, wala lang. Baliwala mo lang, gaya na ginawa niya sa'yo. So, yun. Adjusting events after the reporting period are those that provide evidence of conditions that existed at the end of the reporting period and non-adjusting events are the after reporting period. Those are that are indicative of conditions that arose after reporting period. Na ito pa. Dito nyo gagamitin yung ano nyo? Yung analysation nyo. Oo. Ganit tayo na. Paano nyo malalaman kung adjusting siya o hindi? Kasi dito, analysation talaga eh. Ano lang, the entire accounting ano, is analysation. Ang gawin natin ulit yung graph. Ito ulit si 1231. Ito si uh, authorized for issues. Let's assume it's 415. Authorized for issue lang. Ngayon, there, uh, ganito yun sa analysation ng adjusting and adjusting. Ah. Okay. Ganito yung common sense yan para malaman mo kung adjusting. Nalaman mo lang, nalaman mo lang, parang nalaman mo ngayon, in this events after the reporting period, dito mo nalaman, pero dati pa pala yan. Ganun si adjusting. Dati pa pala yan. Dito mo lang nalaman. Dati pa pala yan dapat, ngayon mo lang nalaman. Ganon yung, uh, yung logic ni adjusting event. Ngayon mo lang nalaman, pero dati pa pala yan. Okay, oh. That provide evidence of conditions that already existed dito pa lang. It already exists. However, ngayon lang na-confirm, ngayon lang nalaman during the events after the reporting period, during this timeline. Dati pa pala, ulitin ko lang, dati pa pala, pero ngayon lang nalaman, ngayon lang na-confirm. Are those that provide evidence of conditions that, ito yung piv, ano yan ha, existed na at the end of the reporting period. So ulitin na natin, ulit ulitin natin ito para makabisado nyo. Ngayon mo lang nalaman, ngayon lang na-confirm, pero dati pa pala yan nung reporting period. Oo, ngayon ganyan yan. Kaya na adjusting events after the reporting period, yung common sense niya, Those are indicative of conditions that arose after the reporting period. So, dito na nangyari. Dito na nangyari. And dito mo rin alaman, ganun, si non-adjusting. So, ulitin lang natin. Adjusting event, to relevant kasi mag adjust ka talaga dito. Ngayon mo lang nalaman in this point. Ngayon mo lang nalaman in this point. Pero dati pa pala yan. Ganun yan. Si non-adjusting, dito na nangyari, dito mo pa nalaman. So, since dito na nangyari, dito pa malaman, hindi siya kasali dito sa financial statements mo for this one, di ba? Dito yan siya kasali for the current. O, di ba? Ganun yan. Kaya sinasabing adjusting, kasi dito na nangyari, ngayon mo lang nalaman, so ibig sabihin, kasali pa siya dito. So, magkakaroon talaga ng adjustments. Pero kay non-adjusting, dito na nangyari, dito mo pa nalaman, so, dito na nangyari eh, hindi dito. 
Di ba? Hindi dito. So baka anong labot niya diyan, di ba? Wala. So nan adjusting siya. So yun yung logic nila. Yun yung reasoning behind the two. Ngayon. Sir, next question. Paano malaman kung kailan yung ano? Kung kailan yung authorization date? Ito lang yan. Date of authorization of the FS. This is the date when the management authorizes the FS for issue regardless of whether such authorization for issue is for further approval or for final issuance to users. So yan. Kahit na sabihin na pinakita sa shareholders on April 15 pero nagkaroon ng management authorization nung March 31. Anong susundin nyo? March 31. Kasi nagkaroon na ng management authorization. Wa tayo kebs kung kailan yan uh, na-authorize for issue for further approval. Ibig sabihin, mas nakakataas pa. Or kailan yan yung actual na issue sa users. Which usually April 15, April 16. So yun, ha? Management authorization. O sinasabi sa problem. Oo, hanapin mo. Figure mo sa problem saan dyan yung authorization date. Kasi, uh, yan, yung, ano, yan yung magiging limit mo kung kailan mo, kung kailan yung, uh, tawag dito, kung kailan, hanggang kailan yung events after reporting period. Parang ganito ba? Go tayo timeline ulit. Time, time graph o ano man yan. Uh, so, ito, 12.31, ending of the reporting period. Let's say March 31, 3, may 31 ba sa March? Oh. March 31. Management authorization. Management authorization. Let's say pagdating ng April 10. Ah, uh, 4:10. April 10, let's say bro, board approval. Oh, board approval tayo. Board approval. Or board authorization or board resolution to issue. Ganyan. Ngayon, pagdating ng April 15, 4.15 uh, Final issuance to users na Final issuance Pinakita mo na sa shareholders Binigyan mo sila ng copy So ngayon Ano ang paniniwalaan mo? Diba, paniniwalaan Ano yung magiging basis mo ng Events after reporting period? Ano yung magiging time mo? To consider that as an events after the reporting period From this From December 31 to April 10? Hindi. From December 31 to April 15? Hindi. From December 31 to March 31. Kasi nung March 31, nagkaroon na ng management authorization. Kasi nga, regardless kung may further approval pang kailangan or final issuance. Na ito, further approval to eh. Kasi mas mataas yan sila sa management. O ito, final issuance na to. Oo, regardless. Tingnan mo kung saan yung management authorization. So, yung events after the reporting period mo is this one. Ito ang tama. Ngayon. So, mas maganda ito mo pag classroom discussion, may graph talaga tayo sa board. Ngayon, ito examples ng adjusting events. So, ito. Tandaan, adjusting events. Ngayon mo lang nalaman, pero dati pa pala yan. Non-adjusting, ngayon mo nalaman, ngayon rin nangyari. So, examples of adjusting events. Uh-huh. Ito una. The settlement after the reporting period of a court case that confirms that the entity has a present obligation at the end of the reporting period. O ganyan, ya? Tingnan nyo. Settlement after the reporting period of a court case that confirms that an, the entity has a present obligation at the end of the reporting period. So, ano meaning yan? Tingnan nyo. Yung confirmation ng court, eh, yung court decision, nangyari after the reporting period. Pero yung conditions that would provide for that obligation, nangyari na at the end of the reporting period, meaning on that timeline. Ganyan to, oh. Ibig sabihin, in this case, o oh, in this part, nag-decide ng court na, okay, you are liable for this ano, obligation. Like for example, nagkaroon ng aksidente, uh, November 31, na aksidente yung ano yung trabahad trabahante mo because of lapses sa sa tag dito sa safety because of the lapses sa safety ng planta nyo so nagkinasuhan kayo so sabi natin within 2 months na ano na oh. pero yung within 2 months court decision matagal yan so let's see ganun nangyari no November 31 may no may 31 ba ah, wala November kasi di ba walang 31 ng November November 30 
Yun, liability. May uh, naaksidente yung ulitin natin, na, naaksidente yung pumasok naman yung pusa. Oy, bakit ka? Kung uh, naaksidente yung trabahante mo sa factory niyo kasi lapses sa, sa safety protocols. So, liability ng company, kinasuhan kayo. Ngayon, nagkaroon ng court decision. Let's say on February 15, na guilty yung company for the liability. So, kailangan bayaran, kailangan i-compensate for damages. Di ba? Publiko natin. Yung trabahante mo. Kasi nag, there's negligence on your part eh. Nagkaroon ng lapse sa safety protocols ng, kampa, ng company mo. So, ngayon, ganun yung nangyari. Ganun yung conditions. Di ba? So, pag ganun yung nangyari, same dito, di ba? That is an event after the reporting period that is adjusting. Kasi, yung conditions for that obligation nangyari at the end of the reporting period. So take note ha, yung, inter- yung pagkasabi ng at the end of the reporting period, it only means na ito yung 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 ending ha. Huwag yung sabihin yung 12.31 lang, 12.31 lang. Hindi ganun ha. Hindi ganun. Oy. Lagyan nyo ng comprehension and understanding. Baka yung iba sa inyo, Sir, at the end of the reporting period, so 12.31 lang, December 31 lang. Hindi rin. Hindi ganun minimin yun. Ibig sabihin, ito yung limit, ito yung maximum, ito yung deadline ng accounting period mo. Okay? And, uh, wala, let's explain. Baka yung iba sa inyo, sinabi ko lang, baka yung iba sa inyo nahihilo. So yun ha, ganun yung, may conditions tayo. Nagkaroon ka ng liability, yung conditions for that nangyari noong November 30, kasi that time na, na accident yung trabahante mo. Yeah, ganun. Pero nagkaroon na ng confirmation from the court decision yung sa, about sa obligation mo. So that, from that, alam mo na, adjusting event yan. Kasi yes, nag-decide lang yung court after ng reporting period. Pero yung conditions for that obligation, for that liability, has already occurred. Has already existed at the end of the reporting period. Kasi nangyari yung aksidente noong November 30 before 12.31. Okay, ganun, di ba? O, next example. The receipt of, hala, pinapasok ng pusa ko yung anak niya sa kwarto ko. Huy! Tim! Huy! May pasok. So, second example. The receipt of information after the reporting period. So, natanggap mo lang after the reporting period. Indicating that an asset was impaired already at the end of the reporting period. Example. Bankruptcy of a customer that occurs after the reporting period may indicate that the carrying amount of the trade, uh, trade receivable at the end of the reporting period is impaired. Meaning yan. May receivable ka sa customer mo. Ngayon, <coughs> bigla mong nalaman at the end of the reporting period na bankrupt yung customer mo. So yung receivable mo from that customer, useless na. Oo. Impaired na. Ah, uh, impaired na yung tawag doon? Uh, tawag dito, accounts receivable. Ah, tiyan mo, yung mga basics, nakakalimutan na natin. Impairment of, search ko lang ha, impairment of, tiyan mo, yan yung may, mahirap minsan eh. Yung mga basics, nakakalimutan na. Impairment of, skip nyo na to. Ah, uh, Yun, allowance for doubtful accounts yun. Ah, sa inventory, eh, sa, sa accounts si Bawal nyo. Hello? Saan tayo napunta? Uy, yeah! Yun. Di yeah. ba? Sabi natin, dito nag- nabankrap yung customer mo. So, yung receivables mo sa kanya, impaired na. Doubtful accounts na siya. Yung possibility of receiving something from him, from being probable, naging... Remotely possible na lang or possible na lang. Di ba? Ganun. So, ganun nangyari. But you know, common sense will tell you, pag nabankrupt dito, ibig sabihin dito pa lang may problema na yung customer. Kasi hindi yan automatic na babankrupt. Oo, kasi dito pa lang, previously pa lang, may problema na. It indicates na may problema na dito beforehand kapag nabankrupt siya dito. So since the conditions of bankruptcy of the customer has already occurred, has already existed at the end of the reporting period, it will tell you na dito pa lang mag-a-adjust ka na. 
Kasi di ba hindi yan, basta-basta nagbabankrap eh. Ibig sabihin, may mga conditions, may mga prelog pa yan, oh. may mga preconditions pa yan. Oo, may mga, ibig sabihin beforehand pa lang, may mga problema na si customer. Na because of that compiling ng problema, naging bankrupt siya. So it will tell you na beforehand pa lang na may problema na yan. That has already existed at the, the reporting period. So from that, that is an adjusting event. Nalaman lang, na confirm lang at this point. Pero dati pa pala yung problema na yan. So since dati pa pala yung problema na yan, adjust mo. O, di ba? Lagyan yung logic, lagyan yung reasoning. Ito, the sale of inventory sa the reporting period may give evidence to their net as well. Oh, okay, guys, same. Ito, another one. Another one. The determination after the reporting period of a cost of the asset purchase or the proceeds from the asset sold before the end of the reporting period. So, simple, di ba? Nabenta mo na dito pa lang, pero na-confirm mo lang yung price. Na-confirm mo lang yung cost afterwards. Pero nangyari na sa beforehand. Kasi hindi kayo sure eh. Kasi pina, let's say for example, lupa yan. Confirm na na benta. Dito pa lang. Pero yung kung magkano talaga, dito nyo lang na confirm, dito nyo lang nalaman. So yung conditions, nandito na. Kasi nabenta na yung lupa eh. Or nabili mo na yung lupa. Kung magkano man, yung exact amount, dito lang nalaman. Pero yung conditions, existed already at the end of the reporting period. Nandyan na. Nagkaroon na ng confirmation sa amount. Oh, so, adjusting event yan. Oh, yan. Listening lang yan. The discovery of frauds or errors that indicate that the FS is correct. Is incorrect. So, ibig sabihin dito, nagkaroon ng fraud, nagkaroon ng mistake. Tapos nalaman nyo lang dito na may fraud or mistake na. So, siyempre, since dito yung fraud or mistake, dito, ayusin nyo to. Na-discover nyo lang kasi dito. Oh, yan. Adjusting event. Oh, yan. Lagyan talaga reasoning yung kapatid. Ngayon, let's go to examples of non-adjusting events normally requiring disclosures lang. So, kung non-adjusting events yan, disclosure lang yan. So, ito. Changes in fair value, foreign exchange rates, interest rates or markets after the reporting period. So, dito yan. Casualty losses occurring after the reporting period but before the FS was authorized for issue. So, ganito. Casualty losses. So, ganito yan. Ang example. Yung casualty losses, yung incidents, nangyari dito. Pero before the issuance of the FS. So, pag ganon, ano lang, uh, tawag dito, disclosure lang. Kasi sabi ko disclosure lang. So, changes for value, to Nangyari dito, yung event. So, disclosure lang. Nangyari dito, ha? Tanda nyo, nangyari dito. Disclosure lang. So, yan, ha? Pagdating kay adjusting events, adjust mo na yung amount, disclosure pa. Pagdating kay non-adjusting event, disclosure na lang. But take note, ha? it should happen before the issuance of the FS. Kasi pag after ng issuance ng FS, wala na tayong pake dyan. So, yun, no? Litigations arising solely from events occurring after the reporting period. So, nandito yung nangyari. For example, example natin kanina, di ba? Na-accidente yung trabahante mo noong November 30. Ngayon, let's say na-accidente siya noong January 15. So, da, nandito na nangyari yung event. So, wala na siyang labot dito. So, disclosure na lang. Kasi nangyari siya before the issuance of the FS. So, yan ha. Ulitin lang natin ha. Adjusting event. mag adjust ka. And disclosure. Non-adjusting, disclosure lang. Ito mga example. Major ordinary transactions after reporting period. So, di ba? Ganun lang yan. Ito mga disclosures. Ngayon, let's go to application of concepts, classroom discussion. So, ito. ABC Co. completes the draft of its December 31 year-end financial FS noong January 1. So, yan. On February 5, nakompleto niya yung draft ng FS niya. For the year, ah, uh, for the, ah, blah, ulit natin. ABC Co. completes the draft of its December 31, 2001 year-end financial FS noong January 31, 2001. So, yung year-end niya is December 31. Now, on February 5, 2002, the Board of Directors reviews the FS and authorize them for issue. So, yan na. 
Yan yung first authorization. Yan yung first approval. Take note of that. The entity announces its profit and selected other financial information on February 23. The, the FS are made available to shareholders and others on March 1, 2002. The shareholders approve or further approval. The FS, so ito, uh, the shareholders approve the FS at their annual meeting on March 18 and the approval and the approved FS are then filed with the regulatory body, usually BIR yan, SEC, on April 1, 2002. Events after the reporting period are those occurring. So, tiyatanong dito yung time period. Ano yung events after the reporting period mo? Ano, <coughs> ano yung beginning, ano yung end? Answer dito, B. Ha, sir, hindi kasama yung December. Yan, hindi talaga yung kasama, kapatid. Kasi, yan yung end date eh. Yan yung end date ng FS mo. Hindi yan yung starting date ng reporting period mo. Sinali na natin dito para alam mo kailan yung end ng reporting period. So, from January 1 to February 5. Oh, February 5, sir. Oo, kasi ito yung first approval eh. Diba? Nakalagay dito. Oh, the date when management authorizes the financial statements for issue regardless of whether such authorization for issue is for further approval, wala tayong pake dyan, or for final issue to issues, wala tayong pake dyan. Basta kung kailan yung first approval, kailan yung first authorization, yun yung pake natin doon. Yun doon, doon tayo may pake. So yan na, take note. Hindi December 31 ang starting, January 1. Kasi, December 31 yung year end. Yan yung last day ng FS. Bakit mo isasama yan as after the reporting period? Eh yan yung end ng reporting period. So common sense will tell you the next day. Di ba? Haluan rin natin ng common sense. So, January 1, 2002. Ha? Kasi, ulitin na natin, haluan natin ng common sense, December 31 yung end date. Yan yung year end. Bakit mo isasama sa events after the reporting period? Ito yung reporting period eh. Diba? So, January 1, the next day. So, February 5, yan yung first approval. Oh? First authorization. Wala tayong pake dito kay February 23 kasi March 1 na to. Kasi mga further approval yan eh. Further uh, final issuance yan sila. So, ulitin natin. The events after the reporting period, January 1, 2002 to February 5, 2002. Ngayon, let's go to number 2. Events, uh, uh, these are events that are indicative of conditions that arose after the reporting period. After the reporting period. So, events that are indicative of conditions that arose after after ibig sabihin after the reporting period meaning those are non-adjusting events kasi oh indicative of conditions that arose after the reporting period now take note indicative of events that already existed at the end of the reporting period are adjusting those that arose after the reporting period non-adjusting sila only for disclosure so letter B Ngayon, ito, may solve-solve dito. Entity A recognizes a provision for a pending litigation amounting to 50K. So, ibig sabihin, the condition... So, uh, hmm. so, ibig sabihin, pending litigation. Ibig sabihin, may kaso na at the end of the reporting period. Meaning, the uh, conditions... For such litigation, for such obligation, has already existed. Or obligation man yan or, ano, or receive something for you. Yeah? Kasi either liability yan or may receivable ka. Kasi ikaw yung nagkaso o ikaw yung kinasuan. Pag ikaw yung nagkaso, receivable yan. Pag ikaw yung kinasuan, possible liability yan. So, sabi dito, Entity A recognize a provision for a pending litigation amounting to 50K on December 31. 2001. So, ibig sabihin, ah, uh, tawag dito, ina expect niya na sa yung kinasuan, no, kasi provision yan. Mm, sa yung kinasuan. Kasi, pag ano, receivable yan, tawag dito, this amount is, kailan nyo pa mapagdaanan yung PAS, PAS 12 provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent Uh, assets para sa ano. But basically, uh, pag recognizing receivable, stricto tayo. Pero pag, pag 
recognizing liability, goods lang tayo, provision yan. So anyways, napapahaba explanation natin. Entity A recognize a provision for a pending litigation amounting to 50K. Kasi itong events after the reporting period, IES 3 din to siya eh. So kailangan na pagdaanan nyo muna yung IES 2 kasi nandun yung provision, yung PES 12. So ngayon sasabi ko, pagdating ng IES 3, kailangan nyo muna mapagdaanan ng IES 2 and IES 1 bago, nyo papagda, bago kayo mag IES 3 kasi ang IES 3 parang paglalaruan nyo yun yung, ano, yung, yung mga natutunan nyo. O paglalaro paglalaro ano yung mga natutunan niyo nung IS1 and IS2 kasi diyan yun yung parang ano ba i-puzzle puzzle niyo niyan. Basta ba ganun yung explanation niyan. <sighs> Napapahaba explanation natin, no? <laughs> Entity A recognize a provision for a pending litigation amounting to 50k on December 31. Basta basically liability na to siya. So may obligation siya. So ngayon, nung December 31 ni recognize niya tong amount na to na may possibility may probability na magbabayad siya ng 50,000 kasi liability yan eh, obligation. End of current reporting period. So, ang meaning yan, noong December 31 pa lang, the conditions for this obligation has already existed. Nag, nag ano, reflect niya na nga sa, ano niya eh, sa FS niya eh, yung 50K. Oo, na may possibility, may probability na magbabayad siya. Oh, this amount is reflected in Entity A's reported profit of 600,000 for the year 2001. Now, shortly after December 31, 2001, but before the FS were authorized for issue, so yan, events after the reporting period, the litigation is settled for 40,000. The correct profit for, 2000, for 2001 is, so ngayon na, ganyan nang isang ganyan nangyari. In expect, ni Entity A na 50K yung liability na babayaran niya for the obligation pending the litigation noong December 31. Ngayon, after the reporting period, but before the settlement of the FS, uh, authorization of the FS, nag-decide na yung korte na 40K yung babayaran na liability ni Entity A. So yung in-expect na ni Entity A was 50K. Na kung saan, ni-record niya na, ni-reflect niya na sa kanyang FS. Pero yung pala, 40K lang yung babayaran niya. So, ano mangyayari dyan? I-adjust mo ba? Oo. I-adjust mo. Bakit? Kasi gaya na sabi natin, pending litigation, no, amounting to 50K, big sabihin, at the reporting period, yung conditions indicative of that was already existing. And, yung confirmation, happened during the period after the reporting period but before the authorization or issue. So, nandyan pa sa timeline. So, with that, magkakaroon talaga tayo ng adjustment. So, anong adjustment yun? Take note. The litigation is settled for 40K. So, ibig sabihin yung gagastusin niya, yung litigation, ano, yung liability expense niya, parang ganun, is 40K yung babayaran niya. Eh, yung na-record niya beforehand was 50K. So, big sabihin, may gain siya. May gain siya. Kasi ang in-expect niya, ang ni-record niya na babayaran niya was 50,000 expense. Pero 40,000 lang pala yung babayaran niya. Eh, yung 50,000 expense na-reflect niya yan sa 600,000 profit niya eh. Na-reflect niya sa 600,000 profit. Nga ngayon, yun pala, 40,000 lang yung babayaran niya. 40,000 lang yung babayaran niya. So ngayon, may 10,000 siyang nasobrahan na expense. So ibabalik niya yun sa 600,000. So 610,000 yung tamang sagot. O, ulitin natin ha. 50,000 yung ina-expect niyang expense for that ano, liability na babayaran niya. Pero yun pala, 40,000 lang yung actual niyang babayaran. Na anong gagawin mo dun sa 10K na expense? Ibalik mo kay 600,000. So, maging 610,000 'yan. Bakit? Ah, bakit niya sa bakit profit expense iba 40, ba, di bakit hindi 590? Tandaan niyo expense ang pinag-usapan natin dito. Na 50,000 yung ina-expect niyang expense na babayaran niya, gagastusin niya, yun pala 40,000 lang yung gagastusin niya. So may 10k gain. Na yung 10k na gain na yun, ibalik mo dito. So 610,000 yung profit niya. 
Kasi 'di ba ang profit ang ano natin is income and gains siya, 'di ba? Di ba? So yan, 610,000. So I hope you get it. Now, number four, which of the following is an example of an adjusting event? Let us see. Sale of inventories after the reporting period that gives evidence to their net reserve. And then, period to, example natin to. And lastly, which of the following is an example of a non-adjusting event? Letter D. Bagay to, significant decline in foreign exchange rates after the reporting period resulting to massive losses on recognized foreign currency denominated financial statements. Disclosure lang to, Naklagay yun dito sana natin. Sa examples. Kasi ito, ito sila. Major business combination after reporting period, non-adjusting yan. After reporting period, nangyaring conditions eh. Building totally raised by fire. So, yan. Continu- losses yan, no? Casualty losses yan. Issuance of share stocks after reporting period, uh, uh, hindi yan, hindi yan, non-adjusting yan. Ito naman. Yung letter D, non-adjusting. Letter A, adjusting yan. Kasi bankruptcy of customer. Kasi, It shows na bankruptcy yan eh. So, before pa lang, nagkakaproblema na si customer. So, that as an indicative of a condition existing already at the end of the reporting period. So, adjusting yan. Evidence indicating that the asset is impaired at the end of the reporting period. So, yan. Obviously. Legal proceedings after the reporting period for an incident that occurred before the end of the reporting period. So, yan. Kanina, yung sa November 30, trabahante na disgrasya. Yeah? So with that, next topic tayo, PS60 na tayo. Okay, dito naman tayo sa ating next topic which is income taxes. No? Sabi ko kanina is was past 16 no, PPM pero income taxes pa pala muna, PS12. Now, income taxes. Ah, uh, PS12. Hello sir, mag-compute tayo ng tax for ano dito sa financial accounting reporting. Bakit tayo may income taxes? 'Di ba sa taxation 'yan, sir? Anong sense yan, sir? Uh, before that, ganito yan. Sa PAS 12 income taxes, uh, tawag dito, uh, ano sabihin ko? Uh, under yan sa ano, intermediate accounting part 2 sa liability yan siya. So, sa IEA 2 niya sa madadaanan si income taxes, PAS 12. Ngayon, Before natin discuss anong labot nito sa buhay natin, let's go to the learning objectives. Understand the scope and the fundamental principle of PAS 12. Interpret the terminology used in the accounting for current and deferred taxes. Then state the recognition, measurement, and presentation of current and deferred taxes. Now, itong si PAS 12, for me, ha, personal opinion ko to. Ito yung second most difficult topic under IA 12, uh, under Intermediate Accounting Part 2. Kasi sa intermediate accounting part 2, ang didiscuss ko dyan is liabilities and uh, liabilities and tag dito, liabilities and equity. But for me, uh, yan yung second hardest topic for me. Or for the entire financial accounting reporting, yan yung hardest ta- second hardest topic for me. The, sec- the, fir- the hardest one would be employee benefits. Yan talaga. Dyan ako naloko. Alam mo yung reason bakit mahirap yan para sa akin? Kasi absent ako. Nung dinidiscuss yan, yung MPEN, pati yung PS12, absent ako niyan nung dinidiscuss. So for me, that is the hardest. Kasi wala ako nung discussion, eh. absent ako. Ewan ko anong reason bakit absent ako that time. Nandiyo Dota siguro. Ewan. Oh, but, hindi lang yung reason bakit mahirap yan. Pero sa MPEN talaga yun, nahilo talaga ako dun. Pero buti na lang nung board exam, Meron yan, yung mga notes, notes, ah, mahalaga talaga yun. So, don't forget to take notes. But basically, for me, for the subject of financial account reporting, PS12 bang hardest, the hardest would be the, ano, ah, PS12 yung second hardest, yung pinaka-hard talaga, yung pinaka-matigas, pinaka-matigas, pinaka-mahirap for me, was employee benefits. Pero malalaman nyo kung bakit sinasabi ko to. Pagdating yun ng intermediate accounting part 2. Yan silang dalawa para intermediate accounting part 2 yan sila. Yung mga actuarial, actuarial, pagdating sa ano, huh, grabe talaga yun. Sa MPEN, inherently mahirap na talaga siya. Pagdating sa PS12, kaya mahirap sa akin kasi absent ako nung diniscuss to. So, PS12, income taxation or income taxes. Sir, gaya na sabi ko kanina, sir, bakit yan? Eh, di ba sa taxation yung pinag-uusapan ng income taxes? Now, for our discussion here in PS12, ah, uh, kung makikita nyo sa book ni Jesus, di ba, sa Sifas, 
uh, lengthy siya. Not necessarily lengthy, pero mas mahaba siya as compared sa magiging discussion natin. Bakit? Kasi for this, ang gagawin lang natin is yung theories niya eh. Kasi si FAST to eh. Conceptual framework and accounting standards eh. Theories lang to. Yung in-depth discussion ito, as for other discussions natin, as for other topics natin, sa intermediate accounting yan. Theories lang to. Ang priority natin dito si FAST. So, mapapansin nyo, short tong discussion natin as compared sa kung ano sa bukas at tiris ang presentation natin as with other topics na didiscuss na discuss natin and i-discuss in the future. So, marami tayong nasasabi ngayon. Oh. Madaldal tayo ngayon. So, yun. Ano ba tong labot ng o ano ba tong importansya ng PS12? Ganito kasi yan. Kung nabasa ng introduction ng book ni Zeus, yung basis kasi, uh, kasi of course, yung companies required yan magbayad ng taxes. sa government. Ngayon, nagkakaroon ng problema. Kasi kung ano yung accounting income mo, it does not necessarily mean na yun yung pagkukunan ng taxes ng government. Kasi meron, tin- ta- ta- meron rin tayong tiyatawag na taxable profit or tax loss. Kasi na- just because eh, wait lang. Kasi yung accounting profit mo, iba yan sa taxable profit most of the time. So, yung basis ng kukuning tax sa ng government is yung taxable profit. Hindi sila magbibay sa accounting profit mo. Bakit? Kasi dito, yung accounting profit mo, ang ginamit mong pag-compute dyan was the PFRS, was the accounting standards. E sa pag-compute ng taxable profit mo, yung Philippine tax loss ang basis dyan. Yan yung basis. Kung anong sinabi ng tax loss natin, paano mag-compute ang taxable profit, yun yung magiging basis na government para kung magkano yung kukunin na tax sa'yo, hindi niya gagamitin basis yung standards natin. Yung accounting standards natin. Kasi separate sa tax loss. So because of that differences, pumasok si PS12. Income taxes. Kasi kailangan mong, kailangan mong ma-determine magkano dapat yung kukunin na tax sa'yo ni government. Kasi si government, ulitin natin, hindi niya, wala siyang pake sa accounting profit mo. May pake sa taxable profit mo kasi dyan yun yung magiging basis ng pagkuha niya na taxes. So kaya, meron tayong PS12 because of that reason. Because most of the time, accounting profit is different from taxable profit. Okay? Ngayon, paano yung nakakompute? Total income less total expenses excluding tax expenses. So, para siyang EBIT, di ba? Earnings before income taxes. EBIT tawag doon. Earnings before income taxes. Oh, EBIT. Kasi kung compute mo na lahat, lagay ko lang dito, EBIT. Para siyang EBIT. Oh, itong EBIT, madadaan nyo sa ibang subjects to. Sa so, madadaanan nyo to sa MAS, yan, EBIT na sabi yan dyan. But basically, ganun. total income less total expenses but yung sa expenses exclude mo yung tax expense okay ebit tawag doon earnings before income tax kasi yung yan mo diyan nakadepende pa now dito yung taxable profit mo is computed sa taxable income kung ano yung income mo na for the government is ta ano yan talaga minus the tax deductible expenses So, yun yung taxable profit mo. Yun yung computation nila. Other terms, pre-tax income, financial income, and accounting income. Other term for taxable profit is taxable income. The varying treatments of economic activities between the PFRS and the taxos results to permanent and temporary differences. Ito, ito yung mahalagang terms na makakala nyo malaman. So, yun ah. Na-establish na natin ano yung importansya or ano yung reason bakit meron tayong PS12. Because yung accounting profit is different from the taxable profit kasi si government iba yung pag-compute niya ng income kung saan yung, uh, ng income mo kasi yung income mo dyan niya kukunin yung taxes. Kasi yung ginagamit yung computation siya tax loss. E sa'yo, for the company yung ginagamit mo is PFRS eh. Yeah? So, bakit meron different yung dalawa? Ewan ko sa kanila. Kasi, depende yan sa kung ano. Discretionary kasi yan eh. Discretionary yan. Yan, tax loss, discretionary yan ng government. Kung ano yung trip niya. Kung 30% ba yan? Or ngayon, 25% na lang for the corporate tax, di ba? Eh, may OSD rin tayo. O, paano? Di ba? Basta wala pa kayong tax this sem, no? Malalaman nyo yun sa tax nyo this. Uh, sa income taxation. Sa taxation nyo next semester. 
Next semester ba? Second sem Oh, mga next semester. Kasi next school year, income taxation kayo, taxation part 1. Then, the second semester nun, business taxation na kayo. Business and transfer tax. So, yun. Ngayon, may tinatawag tayong permanent and temporary differences. Ba? Ulitin ko, huwag niyong masyadong problemahin tong PS2. Yeah, diba sinabi ko, mahirap to. Huwag niyong masyadong problemahin yan for this subject. Kasi, theories lang to. Problemahin nyo na yan pagdating nyo ng uh, intermediate accounting part 2. So, permanent and temporary differences. So, ulitin lang natin, due to these differences between the accounting profit and taxable profit, it results to permanent and temporary differences. So, ano ba itong permanent differences? Basically, these are the differences that do not have future tax consequences. Ibig sabihin, wala silang future tax, kung tinagalog tayo, wala silang ano, wala silang effect sa taxes mo in the future. Paano yun, sir? Itong examples. Take a look at this, ha. Interest income on government bonds and treasury bills, interest income on back deposits, dividends income, fines, surcharges, and penalties arising from violation of law, life insurance premium, or employees where the entity is the irrevocable beneficiary. Na ito, makikita nyo to. Makikita nyo yung tax effects nito pagdating nyo ng, ng taxation. Itong interest income on government bonds and treasury bills, itong interest income on bank deposits, itong dividend income, withholding tax yan. Ibig sabihin, hindi na kayo yung, paano ba to explain sa mga wala pang tax? Ibig sabihin yan, bigyan ko lang kayo ng idea, ibig sabihin yan, hindi na kayo magbabayad yan. Kasi yung pambayad yan, binayaran yan yung, ano, like fiction, ganito, ganito, para mas maintindihan. Ikaw to, yung idea ng withholding tax. Ito ang idea ng withholding tax. Ikaw to, you. Pero dapat sa taxation to yung explain eh. Pero, ito ang idea ng withholding tax. Usually kasi, pag magbabayad ka ng tax, ito yung typical na nangyari. Ikaw to, babayaran mo si government ang tax. Yan yung typical. Yung idea ng withholding tax is, ah, wait lang. Uh, paano? Let's say ito yung source of income mo. Ito yung income source. O, di ba? May kinita ka? May kinita ka. Itong idea. May kinita ka. Source of income mo, may kinita ka. So, idea ng taxes, part of that kinita mo, ibibigay mo sa government. Yan yung typical na nangyari. Now, ganito yung idea or ganito yung concept behind withholding tax. Ito yung source of income mo. Let's say ito, interest from bank deposits. Di ba? Yan yung source of income mo. Now, sa withholding taxes, ang idea dyan, instead na idadaan pa sa'yo at ikaw magre-remit sa government ng taxes, ang idea dyan, kung saan ang galing yung income mo, sila na bahala, magbigay kay government. I-withhold na yan nila. So, para sa'yo, yung marireceive mo is yung net of the tax. Oo. Para hindi na ikaw yung mag- remit kay government. Sila na ang bahala. Yan yung idea ng withholding tax. Na instead na ikaw yung magbabayad, ang ibibigay na lang sa iyo is net of tax. Yung source of income mo na yon, in this case the bank, sila na yung bahala mag-remit sa government. Yan yung idea ng withholding tax. Okay? Same din dito, interest income on government bonds and treasury bills. Kasi dito, since the government na yung inut, yung maano sa bonds and treasury bills, sila kukunin na nila on their part. Dividend income, o di ba, galing sa corporate. So, yung ibibigay sa yung dividend income ng corporation, net of tax na yon, Kasi si corporation na yung magre-remit ng tax na dapat mong bayaran kay government. So, yan yung idea ng withholding tax. So, in that case, permanent differences are those that do not have future tax consequences. Ito yun sila. Familiarize lang. Saan yung araw ko dito? Oh, ito, napadiscuss tayo ng taxation. Pero yan yung idea ng withholding tax. Ito kasi, bakit? Bakit na wala silang future tax expenses? Kasi on your part, yes, this is a profit on the company. However, wala ka nang babayarang tax dyan. Kasi it was already remitted from the source of the income. So, wala na siyang future tax consequences kasi yung tax para sana dito, hindi na ikaw yung magbabayad. Yung kung saan ang nanggaling. O withholding tax yun. O ba? 
Kaya, wala na tong future tax consequences. Ulitin na natin. Kasi yung tax para dito was already paid. Was already remitted by the, to the government kung saan man yan ang galing. Either the government or yung banko man o yung corporation na nabayaran na nila. So, wag mo nang bayaran yung tax kasi nabayaran na. Kaya, note, future tax consequences. Ito naman, fines, surcharges, and penalties arising from violation of law. Ito kasi yung problema dito. If I remember correctly, hindi mo siya pwedeng gawing expenses. Hindi mo siya pwedeng gawing tax deductible. So, tanggal yan. Life insurance plan or revocable beneficiary. Ito naman, sa ano yan, sa business and transport tax yung reasoning dito. So, well, yun yung permanent differences basically. Walang future tax consequences. Ito namang sa temporary differences, ito may future tax consequences sila to. Bakit, sir? Anong reasoning yan, sir? Nang temporary differences. Ganito lang yan. Ganito yung idea before, be, behind the temporary differences. Let's say 2020 ngayon. Ah, let's say 2020 and 2021. Ito yung idea ng temporary differences. Okay? Tandaan Ito lang idea. Simple idea. Ito yung in, kung explain mo sa, no, sa, simp sa simpleng tao. Layman's term, kumbaga. Uh, for the year 2020, hindi siya taxable. Pero pagdating ng 2021, taxable siya. Ibig sabihin, babayaran mo na. For the year 2020, taxable siya. 2021, hindi na. Yan yung temporary differences. For now, hindi pa siya babayaran. Pero pagdating ng next year, babayaran mo na, taxable na kasi. Or for now, babaya, uh, hindi, na, hindi mo na siya babayaran. Pero pag, uh, binayaran mo na. So pagdating ng 2021, hindi na siya babayaran. Hindi na siya taxable. Yan yung meaning ng temporary differences in layman's term. Bakit temp kaya nga temporary? For now, hindi mo na. For now, oo. For now, hindi mo na. Kasi next year pa. Or for now, yes. Kasi pagka next year, wala na. Ganyan yung idea ng temporary differences. Because of those differences, may ibang effect. Yung in-depth discussion nito, of course, sa intermediate accounting part ko nyo na. Kasi dyan yung explanation talaga nyan. Ngayon, ang dinidiscuss na natin, ito lang, beses ko na itong sinabi sa mga lecture videos natin, yung theories lang. Parang intro to siya. Para, ah, kasi dati, wala tong ganito eh. Walang sifas dati. Oo, far agad. Then, the far agad. Oo, basic accounting agad. Walang discuss-discuss na ito. Walang sifas. Then, after ng basic accounting, accounting for partnership and corporation yun. Then, jump na sa intermediate accounting part 1, part 2, part 3. Walang si FAS. Eh ngayon, nilagyan na ng si FAS para at least theories ma-discuss properly. Para may introduction kayo before at ano, beforehand. So yan, temporary differences have future tax consequences, di ba? Temporary differences are either, either taxable or either or deductible. Sa taxable temporary differences arise for uh, arise for example when financial income is greater than taxable income or the carrying amount of an asset is greater than its tax base. Yung tax base, parang ganito yan, yung idea ng tax base. Kasi sa book, meron yan per the explanation. Eh. Pero ganito lang idea ng tax base, kapatid. Uh, ano yun? Uh, let's, say, let's say, for example, may asset kang dinidepreciate. May asset ka. Yung accounting base niyan is 1 million. Kasi yung basis mo for the depreciation is let's say straight line. Straight line. Yeah? Ngayon, pagdating ng tax base, it should be 800,000. Ito, explanation lang ha. O, oh, explanation lang. Asset to sa asset. Bakit? Kasi yung ginagamit mong, ginagamit mong pang depreciate sa kanya is sum of the year digits. Sum of the year digits. SYD. So, because of the difference Bef uh, of the depreciation method, yung accounting base is different from the tax base. So, when computing for the accounting profit, ang gagamitin mo is yung accounting base. Pero when computing for the taxable profit, tax base ang gagamitin. 800,000. So, yan yung reason. Ito na yung mga, sa mga reason. Accounting profit, 
ang sabi, sa accounting standards, straight line lang yung pag-depreciate. Pero pagdating ng, ng taxable profit since tax loss ang gamit, sabi ng tax loss, no, gagamitin mo dyan sum of the year digits. So, naging tax base mo, 800 na lang. So, diba? So, because of that differences, ganda yan, simple layman's term explanation to. Because of that differences, nag-iiba yung taxable profit mo sa accounting profit. Now, in this case, taxable temporary differences. Nakarecord ba? Oh, okay. Taxable temporary differences arises, for example, when financial income is greater than taxable income or the carrying amount of the asset is greater than its tax base. Oh, parang ganito. Oh, diba? So, in this case, taxable temporary differences When financial income is greater than taxable income, anong scenario yan? Ibig sabihin, no? Yung accounting profit mo, mas malaki sa taxable profit mo. So, pag ano yung nangyari, para kung ita times mo yan sa 30%, yeah, mas malaki yung mas malaki yung nabayaran mong tax sa financial income compared sa taxable profit, sa taxable income kasi mas malaki siya. Mga ganyang ideas lang yan. Pagdating sa deductible, temporary differences arises in the case of the opposite. Ibig sabihin, the taxable income is greater than the financial income or the carrying amount of the asset is less than the tax base. So, anong meaning ng taxable and deductible? Sa taxable kasi, ang naging reasoning dyan, let's say, for 2020, for the year 2020, since greater yung financial income mo compared sa taxable income, ano meaning yan? Let's say, 1 million yung taxable income mo. Ito, in-explain ko na yung concept, pa-concepts ang in-explain natin. Then, 800 yung taxable, ano ito, accounting income or accounting profit. Ito, taxable income. Times mo to sila sa 30%, kapatid. Times mo sila sa 30% kasi yan yung tax rate, sabihin natin. Yeah? Yeah? 300,000 to. Ito, 24. Ah, 24. 240. Diba, ganyan. Ngayon, ang tax, ito, ang inaan natin yung bakit to taxable and deductible. Ngayon, ito yan. So, ganun ang nangyari. Ang logic dyan, ngayon ito. O, diba? Account, financial income or yung accounting income mo greater than that taxable income. So, ang labot, 300K dapat yung accounting income mo, pero yung binayaran mo lang kasi taxable income was 240,000. So, parang may utang ka pang 60K kasi supposedly, o supposedly, 300K eh. Kaso 240 lang yung nabayaran mo. Hence, taxable temporary differences resulted to deferred tax liabilities. Kasi supposedly, 300K yung babayaran mo. Pero 240 pa lang yung actually. Kasi taxable income. Yeah? Because of that, mayroon kang deferred tax liability of 60K. Kaya siya, taxable temporary differences which results to deferred tax liabilities. May utang ka pang 60K kasi 240 pa lang yun na bayaran mo. So, nakikita nyo na. Pagdating sa deductible temporary differences, deductible temporary differences, let's say, uh, tag dito, let's say it's, ano yun? Uh, accounting income mo was taxable income. Ito, balik na rin natin. Accounting income mo was 800. Taxable mo was 1 million. So, times mo sila 30%. So, ito, 240. Ito, 300. Now, in this case naman, pangit ng writing chicken. Baka may ilo kayo. Ito, sa deductible temporary differences. Now, ito namang reasoning dito. Okay? Opposite siya ng, ano, ng taxable. Kasi sa deductible temporary differences, the taxable income is greater than the accounting income. No? The taxable profit is greater than the accounting profit. So, ano mangyari dyan? It results to deferred tax asset. Ito naman, 
goods to para sa iyo. Kasi ano nangyari? Supposedly ang babayaran mo was 240,000 lang. Pero pero 300,000 yung actual mong nabayaran. So yan yung logic behind that. So since 300,000 yung actual mo nabayaran, mas mataas sa supposedly mababayaran mo. That is a deferred tax asset for you. So it is a deductible. That's good for you because it is deductible. Oh, ganyan yung reasoning. Ulitin natin. Taxable temporary differences, financial income greater than the taxable income, or the carrying amount of the asset is greater than its tax base, which results to greater tax uh, greater tax ano, accounting income compared sa taxable income. So, ganyan yung nangyari. Uh, supposedly, ang babayaran mo was 300,000 lang. Yeah. Pero yung actual mong nabayaran was 240 lang. So parang may utang ka pang 60k. So yung utang mong 60k that is called as deferred tax liability. In the future babayaran mo pa rin 'yan. Kaya siya taxable tawag. Sa deductible temporary differences naman, kapatid. Opposite siya ni taxable kasi yung taxable income mo greater than the financial income. So ito 'yun. Oh, di ba? Ngayon, ang logic naman dito, yung supposedly babayaran mo was 240 lang. However, yung actual na binayaran mo was 300k. So, mas napalaki. So, yung difference na 60,000 in this case, that is a deferred tax asset for you. That is good for you, basically. Kasi deferred tax asset yan. So, that is a uh, deductible. Okay? Ngayon, itong deferred tax asset, deferred tax liabilities, Non-current yan sila. Non-current yan sila. So, itong, if the increase is deferred tax, uh, if the increase in deferred tax liability exceeds the increase in deferred tax asset, then the difference is deferred tax expense. Kapag mas malaki naman yung increase sa deferred tax asset over the deferred tax liability, then, it is a deferred tax income, deferred tax expense, deferred tax expense, to extend realizable, ano meaning yan, sir? Anong labot niyan? Ito yan. Ito wala to sa si book pero nasa intermediate accounting part 2 book to. As you can see, oh, accounting profit basis mo. Yung permanent differences, tanggalin mo na yun sila. Add non-deductible expenses, less non-taxable income. So, malalaman mo na yung accounting profit mo that is subject to tax. Yan yun. Ito yung, ito yung end result niyan eh. That is subject to tax. Kasi tinanggal mo na yung permanent differences eh. Yung walang labot, yung walang future tax consequences. So, since wala silang future tax consequences, meaning wala silang labot, pagdating sa computation mo ng tax, tanggal mo yan. So, ito na yung accounting profit mo subject to tax. Hmm. Ngayon, dyan napapasok yung temporary differences. Dito na sila papasok. So, ito, if the financial income is greater than the taxable income, deferred tax liability yan. Yeah? O if the financial income is less than the taxable income, deferred tax asset yan. Ngayon, compute mo sila. Yeah? Deferred tax, uh, temporary taxable, ano, minus yan. Sa, di, uh, di, uh, uh, sa deductible temporary differences, add dyan. So, taxable profit mo ito. O yan yung labot ito, kaya na-explain to sila. So, wag niyo muna problemahin ito ngayon kasi sa computation na to Kasi, tiris lang tayo ngayon. Pero sa intermediate accounting part 2, yan, in-depth discussion. Ang importante lang dito, naintindihan nyo kung ano yung concept. Ano yung reasoning ulit? Kasi, iba yung computation sa tax laws as compared sa computation under the PFRS. Kaya, meron tayong PS12. Okay, ito lang yan. Ito lang ganyan. ganyan ito lang talaga yan. Wala ito sa si Facebook na sa intermediate accounting part 2 book to. So, yan yung compute. Kaya, pero nilagay ko na dito kasi mas, mas maintindihan yung concept pag ganito ang presentation. Di yeah? ba? Dito ang deferred tax liability. O, oh, di yeah? ba? Current tax expense. Ngayon, punta tayo sa classroom discussion. Basta, if it is probable that the recovery or settlement of carrying items amount or asset liability will make future tax payments larger than they would be if such recovery or settlement were no where they don't have... Uh, ano tayo sa boses natin? If it is probable 
that recovery or settlement of a carrying amount of an asset or levity will make future tax payments larger than they would be if such recovery or settlement were, were to have no tax consequences, an entity shall recognize deferred tax levity ang answer dito. Oh. So naman, the, these are the differences that do not have future tax consequences, permanent differences. Ito naman, this type of differences will give, rights, will give rise to deferred tax asset, deductible temporary differences. Kasi good siya siya. Hmm? Partner yun sila. Beto, basically, ganito yung magiging computation mo. Pero may ibang formulas din depende sa understanding. Ito lang yung ito yung gusto-gusto kong gamitin kasi maganda yung ano niya eh. May flow siya. Pero pag shortcut, pag mabilisan, meron ding other forms or other formulas. Ito naman, number 4, income computed using PFRS is 100,000. While income computed taxes is 80,000. The difference is taxable temporary differences. Bakit? Kasi tingnan nyo, mas malaki yung accounting income compared sa taxable income. So, anong meaning nun? Taxable, ah, taxable temporary differences. Yeah, yeah. During the period, deferred tax asset increased by 500 while deferred tax liabilities increased by 600. The net change is deferred tax expense. Kasi ulitin nyo, dito na lang kayo. Oh. Pag mas malaki yung increase ng deferred tax liabilities compared sa deferred tax assets, that is a deferred tax expense. The opposite, deferred tax income or benefit. So in this case, mas malaki yung increase sa deferred tax asset. Ah, sa deferred tax liability kasi 600 do. Compared sa increase ng deferred tax asset kasi 500 lang. So yung 100, deferred tax expense. So ulitin lang natin. Huwag nyo masyadong problemahin yung computation ng PS12 income taxes kasi introduction to. Para maintindihan yung concept pagdating ng discussion nyo sa IE2, PS12 income taxes. So with that, next topic, PAS16. Property planted equipment. Okay. We, uh, we are now at our last topic. Ah, medyo mapahaba. Sumakit na rin ulo ko. So, tapus, tapusin na natin to. So, ang next topic natin is, uh, tawag dito, property planted equipment, PS16. Now, itong PPE, you will discuss this uh, intermediate accounting part 1 nyo. O, oh, sa assets. If I remember correctly, nasabi yata ni Ma'am Sat na naturo niya daw sa inyo to nung FAR nyo. O, oh, kasi umabot daw kayo ng Uh, ng intangible assets if I remember correctly. So, baka may idea na kayo. So, PPE basically property, plant, and equipment. PS16. Na itong P PPE uh, isa to sa mga mahabang topics sa financial accounting. Oh, mahabang topic na to. Huh? Kita nyo. So, but as you have said in the previous videos, in the previous topics, uh, ano lang tayo dito? Uh, tidis lang kasi si FAS eh. So, in-depth discussion nito, kasama ng solving-solving, intermediate accounting part 2 na yan. So, anong learning objectives ng, ano, ng PA16? Una, state the recognition criteria, initial measurement, and subsequent measurement ng PPE. So, paano, uh, kailan natin na-recognize na PPE siya? Kasi not all. Oh, kasabi nyo, sir, di ba, ang lupa, PPE yan automatically? Hindi, necessarily. Kasi minsan, Iba yung gamit sa lupa so hindi mo siya consider as PPE. So ano yung mga criteria na kailangan natin malaman para masabi natin na itong asset na to isa, isa PPE. Initial measurement and subsequent. Le uh, the second learning objective is apply the principle of PA16 in basic computation of PPE cost, depreciation, carrying amount, and revaluation surplus as well as gain, uh, the gain or loss on its disposal. Now, ito, characteristics sa PPE. Ito na yung mga criteria na kailangan mong tingnan. Dapat lahat to check. Kung isa dyan yung wala, then you cannot consider as PPE. Una, the PPE should be a tangible asset. Meaning, may physical substance siya. Nakikita, nahawakan. Basically, yung five senses, kaya niyang ano yun. Uh, yung senses natin, it can perceive that, di ba? Kikita mo, nahawakan mo. Uh, meron siyang physical, ano, physical substance. Kasi, di ba, may mar meron din tayo mga assets na walang physical substance. Like, intangible assets, di ba? abstract sila. Ito, concrete. Yeah? May physical substance. So, tangible assets dapat ang PPE. Next is that the PPE must be used in normal operations. Items of PPE are used in the production or supply of goods or services for rental or for administrative purposes. So, normal operations. Kasi may mga, may mga 
assets tayo na akala mo PPE, yun pala, it is not used in the normal operations. Like, for example, may mga buildings tayo or may mga lupa tayo or let's say land, yun na lang, na akala mo ginagamit sa normal operations, yun pala hindi. Kasi, yung lupa na yun, nakatenggal lang. Oo. Bakit? Kasi, uh, ang plano ng company is t- instead of using that land in the normal operations, yan, ano na lang, lang. Like, papata papataasin na lang nila yung value. Di ba? Kasi investment property tawag yun. Instead na yung lupa na yun, akala mo PPE, yun pala, hindi ginagamit sa normal operations kasi ang plano ng company is to increase its value through, kasi investment property yung pagano nila doon. So, tingnan mo ang PPE used in the normal operations. And by normal operations, it is the production or supply of goods or services for rental or ministry purposes. And lastly, long term in nature, dapat nan current asset ang PPE because they are expected to be used more than a year. More than a year. Kasi may mga ano tayo eh, akala mo PPE. Yun pala hindi siya PPE kasi hindi siya, yes, tangible siya. Yes, nagagamit siya sa normal operations but it is not long term. For example, inventory. Di ba? Mayro, buy and sell kayo. Uh, real estate ka. Real estate. Nagbibenta ka ng mga lupa. Nagbibenta ka ng mga bahay, house and lot. Na akala mo, ta- akala mo, using normal operations, di ba? Tangible assets, but it is not long term in nature. Makukonsider mo siya as inventory lang. Kasi, hindi ang mag ng mga, ano eh, kasi binibenta mo yan eh. Hindi, ang nature niya is not a PPE, but rather an inventory. Yeah? Or yung, eto, another example is yung investment property. Lupa, akala mo ginagamit as PPE, PA16. But yun pala, under investment property siya. Kasi, ang plano mo doon, instead of using sa normal operations mo, ang yun ginagawa mo, pinapataas mo lang yung value niya. Para kumita ka doon, example, 100, lalo ng lupa. Ben, uh, bili ka ngayon ng lupa, pagka next year, tataas ang value niyan. Next year ulit, tataas ito ang value. Tapos benta mo, parang investment ba? So, yun yung characteristics of PPE. Yan, tatlong yan. Pag walang isa dyan, then hindi sa makonsider sa PPE. Dapat tangible asset, use in normal operations and long term in nature. Ang PPE, non-cash asset siya. Ang non-cash, non-current asset siya. Ito, examples of items of PPE. Land use in business. Kung saan, oh, may planta ka, may factory ka. Kung saan nakatayo yung planta mo, kung saan nakataro yung factory mo. Then, then, that is an item of PPE, PA16. Land held for future plant site. Now, ito, take note. Kapag sinabi lang land held without any purpose, hindi yan PPE. Tandaan nyo. Pag may mga questions yan, land held for undetermined purpose, huwag nyo i-consider yan as PPE. Okay? Pag land held for future plan site, yun, consider nyo yan as PPE. Kasi may purpose eh. Pag undetermined purpose, hindi yan PPE, investment property yan. Building use in business, of course. Equipment used in the production of goods, yan PPE yan. Equipment held for environmental and safety reasons. Oh, kasi ginagamit yun sa ano, normal operations. Equipment held for rentals. Ayun. Tawag dito. Uh, ayun. May building. Uh, uh, tawag dito. Yung equipment. Yung mga, ano yung ginagamit, yung ginagamit sa construction, di ba? Ginagamit sa construction, yung mga malalaking makina. Or, mga buildings, pinaparenta mo. Yun, PPE yan. Major, major spare parts and long live standby equipment. PPE rin yan, it forms part of the PPE. Pag minor spare, spare parts lang yan, yung mga simple lang, hindi yan. Pero ito major spare parts to eh. Furniture and fixture, PPE yan, better plants. Ito, better plants sa uh, agriculture nyo ito madadaanan. But basically, pagdating sa agriculture, P, uh, anong PS yung agriculture? Nakalimutan ko. Check ko doon yung PS yun. Check lang natin. PS41, agriculture. Now, pag madadaanan yung lumito sa agriculture, better plants, for example, mga puno, puno ng mangga, puno ng datilis, puno ng papaya, uh, marang yan. Better plants, consider yan sila as PPE. Oh, may determination yan. Pagdating yun sa PS41. So, ito mga examples of items of PPE. Take note of this sa characteristics. These are the criteria to be considered para masabi mong PPE yan. Now, the cost of an item of property plant equipment shall be recognized as an asset only if, ito, recognition. It is probable that future economic benefits associated with the item will flow to the entity and the cost of the item can be measured reliably. So, basically, ito yung ano, adaptation ng recognition of asset as provided sa conceptual framework natin. 
Yan na lang dito. Di ba? Same lang. Kasi asset ang PPE. Now, let's talk about the initial measurement. Now, you have a PPE. You are able to purchase it or you were able to build it. It was transferred to you. Now, how will you measure that PPE? Measure it initially. Ibig, ibig sabihin yung starting. Measure it at cost. Now, cost, sir. Yan ba yung magkano yung binayaran namin, sir? Or ano? May criteria tayo, may elements tayo para makonsider yan as cost. Ito. Purchase price. Kano binayaran mo? Magkano mo purchase? Isama mo dyan yung non-refundable purchase taxes. Non-refundable purchase taxes. Example yan, uh, percentage tax, uh, yung OPT, yun, OPT. Uh, kasi yung VAT is refundable yan eh. Basta madaanan nyo sa taxation nyo. So yan, basta dito for now, non-refundable purchase tax. Ang VAT refundable yan minsan. Or depende sa ano, transaction. Basta, ah, ah, paano pupunta tayo sa tax ulit. Basta non-refundable purchase tax, kasama yan. After deducting trade discounts and rebates, ito. Pag may, may lagay na, ano, 1 million peso, tapos may trade discount of 100, tanggalin nyo yung 100, 900,000 na lang yan. Kasi, i-deduct mo yung trade discount or rebates, isama mo yung non-refundable purchase tax. Pangalawang elemento, cost directly attributable to bringing the asset to the location and condition necessary for it to be capable, capable, capable of operating in the manner intended by the management. So yan, additional element sa cost ng PPE. Hindi for example na nabayaran mo na yung ano, yung nabayaran mo na yung nabigay mo na yung pera mo para ah, ito nabayaran mo na yung PPE, it doesn't necessarily mean na yung cost ng PPE is kung ano yung binayad mo doon kay seller. Kasi meron ka pang additional cost na kailangan i-consider to isama mo sa cost ng PPE. Ito, cost directly attributable. To what? To bring the asset to the location and condition necessary para uh, necessary to be able to uh, for it to be able to be capable of operating na manual and tenable management. Meaning, uh, tawag dito, lahat ng nagastos mo para yung asset o para yung PPE magamit mo, basically, oh, capable of operating, lahat ng nagastos mo para magamit mo yung PPE directly attributable oo, sama mo sa cost. Oo. Anong example yan, sir? Transportation cost. O, yung delivery. O, nagbayad ka ng 1,000 pesos para i-deliver yan. O, 10,000 pesos para i-deliver yan. Isama mo sa cost ng PPE mo. O, insurance in relation to that delivery. Naninigurado ka. Baka masi magka-aberya sa biyahe. Eh, baka masira yung PPE mo. So, nagbayad ka ng insurance. O, yan, PPE. O, gasto sa gas para matransport yan. Installation cost. O, kasi o, bringing the asset to the location and condition necessary. O, in, siyempre, kailangan mong install yun. Like, makina yun, di ba? Factory equipment. O, sige, kailangan mong install yan. O, ano na gasom sa installment? Cost directly attributable. Di ba? Basta, common sense, uh, gamit, gamitan ng common sense. Itong gastos ba na to? Itong cost ba na to? Is it directly attributable to bringing the PPE to its intended condition para ma-operate, capable of operating? Pero, meron, pero meron din yung mga guide. Mm, di ba? Meron, meron yung list, di ba? Kung makikita nyo sa book. Mga examples. O, basically, ganun, ganun rin yung lalabas sa exam. Kung ano yung mga examples na yan. And lastly, present value of the commissioning and restoration cost to the extent that they are recognized as obligation. Ito. Uh, ang good example na ito. Example, di ba? Ah, uh, alam mo yung mga opera, yung oil rigs, yung offshore oil rigs, yung example yung sa Malampaya, yung mga nagdi-drill ng oil sa dagat, yung oil rigs, PPE yun. Now, itong problema sa mga oil rigs, paano pag decommissioned uh, na siya? Di na gagamitin. So, kailangan tanggalin yun doon. Kailangan tanggalin yun doon. And i-restore mo yung place kung saan ang galing oil rig na yun. Considering na nature yun, di ba? So, in relation to that, you will recognize an obligation. Oo. Present value of decommissioning and restoration cost. So, siyempre, may obligation ka eh. Kailangan mong ayusin yung lugar saan mo nilagay yung oil rig mo, yung PPE mo. Obligation mo yun. So, yung magagastos mo doon, yung obligation mo na yun, isama mo sa cost ng PPE mo. Okay? Gets? Kasi, obligation mo eh. Sinira mo yung lugar eh. Ginamit mo. 
So, pag alis ka na, i-restore mo yung, na, yung lugar na yon. That is part of the cost of your PPE. Kaya na, elements of cost, yan ang sama nyo. Na example of directly attributable cost, gaya na sabi ko may list yan eh, don't worry. Cost of employee benefits arising directly from the construction or acquisition of the PPE or pag self-constructed yung PPE o magkano na gastos nyo? Employee benefits mo, yeah? salaries nila, wages. Cost of site preparation, yung factory mo, hinanda mo yung lugar para, para i-install doon yung PPE. Initial delivery and handling cost or the freight cost. <coughs> Installation and assembly cost. Huh? Nandiyan ang PPE, inayos mo na yung lugar, install mo na. Lalo na pag mamalaking makina yan. Yeah? Testing cost, net of disposal proceeds of sample generated during, during testing. Meaning, uh, example, factory yan, yeah? nagproproduce ka ng Lucky Me. Siyempre, kailangan yung itest yan. Or nagproproduce ka ng noodles. Kailangan yung itest yan uh, kung gumagana. So yun, nagproduce ka ng noodles. Testing yon, Testing cost yun kung magkano na gastos nyo. Then, if you've decided to make benta of those noodles, then net of disposal proceeds of samples generated during testing. So, nagastos nyo testing cost was 1 million peso. Tapos, yung yung samples nyo from that testing cost, yung na-produce nyo, you've decided to sell it for 100,000 peso. O, yung net nun for the testing cost, 900,000 na lang. Kasi nabenta mo yung samples eh. Yeah? And professional fees. Oh, nag-hire ka ng engineer para sa installation or nag-hire ka ng consultant to purchase that PPE para makasigurado kayo na tama yung nabili nyo, di ba? O oh, yan, examples of directly attributable cost. Ngayon, so di ba? Intending the PPE to bring to the condition necessary for it to be ano, capable of operating. Ngayon sir, up to what point should we Uh, include in the cost of the PPE yung mga gastos namin dito. O up to what point? Ito yon Cessation of capitalizing cost to PPE. Recognition of cost in the carrying amount of the PPE ceases. Ibig sabihin mag-stop ka na when the item is already in the location and condition necessary for it to be capable, capable of operating in the manner intended by the management. So yun. Pag nakita mo na, oy, okay, goods na yung PPE natin. It is already in the location, nasa factory na. It is already in the condition necessary for it to be capable of operating. Okay, from that alone, okay, stop na. Hindi, ka na, uh, hindi mo na ikakapitalize sa cost ng PPE yung mga magagastos mo afterwards. So, para naglagay ka na ng limit. Ng, ano, oh. Ito na. Ito na sila. Oh. Ito na yan. Narating nyo na. Oy. Narating nyo na. Ito na. O, oh, any cost after that, huwag nyo na yung isama. Okay? Narating nyo ng location and condition necessary for it to be capable operating. Eh. So, yan. Nag-set na kayo ng ano. Stop na. Any cost after that, expenses ng diretso, huwag nyo na yung i-capitalize sa cost ng PPE. Ngayon, measurement of cost. <coughs> ah. Anong punto nito? Basically kasi, considering the high prices of PPE, uh, uh, hindi yan ultimately na cash agad ay babayad mo. Oh, minsan installment yan, i-defer mo, sa so future mo na bayarin. Yeah? Kasi malalaki ang presyo ng PPE, millions, millions yan sila eh. So, baka hindi mo pwede mabayaran yan agad-agad cash agad ibibigay mo. Oh, baka mag gusto mo installment, installment, uh, yun, installment lang bayad mo, i-defer mo for future payments. So, with that said, let's go to measurement of cost. So, measurement of cost. The cost of an item of PPE is the cash price equivalent at the recognition date. Meaning yung cash price equivalent niya. Kung cash, kung cash mismo ang bayaran. However, if the payment is deferred beyond normal credit terms, which is basically more than one year yan, Defer, ibig sabihin, nag-installation ka, di ba? Sa future mo lang babayaran. Kasi malaking yung price ng PPE. Malaking value yan. Ngayon, if the payment is deferred beyond normal credit terms, the difference between the cash price equivalent and the total payment is recognized as interest over the period of the credit unless such interest is capitalized in accordance with pay, PAS 23, barring cost. Parang ganito yan. Punta ka Lenin, bili ka ng cellphone. Mapapansin mo, 
iba yung price kapag babayaran mo siya cash, iba rin yung price kapag inabail mo yung home credit nila. Oo. Pag, pag ano, pag cash yan, usually mababa yan. Let's say 10,000. Pero pag titingnan mo yung home credit nila, payment, yung home credit program nila for payment, big sabihin installment yung gagawin, makikita mo, laki ng tina- malaki yung tinaas ng presyo. Oo, nagiging 13K, 14K, parang gano'n. Example lang yung price na Baka magalit si Lenny. Pero gano'n, mataas lagi yung price. Example, yung lap- may, may laptop doon. 65,000 yung, ano, yung price. Home credit mo, around 69 siya. Abot siya ng 69, 70,000. Ah, laki ng tinas yun. 4K, 5K yun. So, gano'n yung, mangi- gano'n yung nangyayari dito. Cash price equivalent, Let's say it's 1 million. Pero kapag deferred payment yun, let's say installment, then may patong talaga yan. May patong yan. And usually that is considered as the interest. So yung interest na yun, over the period, ah, uh, tag dito. And the total payment is recognized as interest over the period of credit unless such interest is capitalized in accordance with PS20 borrowing cost. Wala siya na yan, borrowing cost. Sabihin ko ba ngayon pa lang? Ah, gaya, basta ganito ang idea ng borrowing cost. Ha? Sabihin ko lang ngayon pa lang. Ang borrowing cost kasi, uh, nagtatayo ka ng building. Let's say, for example, nagtatayo ka ng building. Then, at the same time, meron kang loan receivable. Meron kang loan receivable. Yeah? Ganun. Papatayo ka ng building while at the same time, meron kang loan receivable. Ah, loans. Uh, meron kang liability sa loan. Ah, ulitin natin. Scrap that. Nagpapatayo ka ng building. Ganon. Then, meron kang liabilities. Ngayon, yung interest on some of that liabilities, ginagamit mo as pambayad sa pinapatayo mong building. Tawag doon, borrowing cost. Basta ganon yung simple explanation ng borrowing cost. Yung interest mo na nare-receive from those liabilities, ginagamit mo pambayad sa sa price ng building o sa price ng pinapatayo mong building. So, naka, nasasama yung borrowing cost sa cost ng building na yun. Oo. So, ganun yung idea kay borrowing cost. Now, ito. Dito, yung interest uh, between the cash person, ito is recognized as interest over the period of credit unless such interest is capitalized under as 23. So ganyan, borrowing cost, may liability ka, yung interest na ano, ginagamit mo as pambayad doon sa building. Ah, liability ba yun? Or, oh, basta malalaman yung PS23, meron yun tayo yan. So yan, yun yung sasabi ko. At basta ang point lang dito, ewan ko, pupunta tayo sa ibang topics, doon. Basta ang point dito sa measurement cost, cash price equivalent, pag cash, agad mo bed, but most of the time, may mga times na, defer payment yung ginagawa mo. So, pag deferred payment, ganyan ang mangyari. Ngayon, acquisition to exchange. Ito naman. Hindi cash yung ginagamit mong pambayad, but rather nagkaroon kayo ng barter. Yeah? Parang nag-barter kayo yung dalawa. Na, instead of paying cash, palit na lang kayo ng item. Now, if that's the case, since hindi cash yung ginagamit nyo, paano mo i-measure yung cost ng PPE mo? Provided naman. Ito, if the exchange has commercial substance, Sana yung commercial substance? Meron yung criteria dalawa na kalimutan ko. Pero usually sinasabi nyo yung problem kung may commercial substance o wala. So yan, take note. Tingnan nyo muna yung problem. May commercial substance ba? Kung meron, ito, proceed kayo. The asset, the asset, the asset, the asset received from the exchange is measured using the following order of priority. Paano yan? Per value of asset given up. Ibig sabihin, yung asset mo, yun yung pinambigay mo, tapos yung sa other party, yung asset niya binigay niya sa'yo. Di ba? Nagkaroon na exchange. Yeah, parang ganito. Ikaw to. Ito yung isa. Other party. Other party. Itong asset mo, binigay mo sa kanya. Siyempre, exchange to eh. Ayan yung asset niya, binigay niya sa'yo. Yeah? Nagawa lang tayo no, para clear. Ah. So, unang criteria mo, unang priority mo is yung asset na nareceive mo, Yung ikakapitalize mong cost dyan, yung gagawin mong cost dyan, is yung fair value of the asset given up. Meaning yung binigay mo. 
yun yung magiging basis ng asset na na-receive mo. Bakit sir? Kasi parang ito yung pinam kasi ito yung pinambayad mo technically, di ba? So ano magkano yung pinambayad mo technically? Yung fair value niya, yun yung magiging cost ng asset na na-receive mo. Now, if there's a problem na hindi given yung fair value ng asset given up, then proceed to the next order. Fair value of the asset received. So, ngayon, yung asset na na-receive mo, kung ano yung fair value niya, eh, yun yung magiging cost niya sa books mo. O, di ba? Ngayon, pag wala yung fair value nilang dalawa, then, carrying amount of asset given up. So, kung magkano yung carrying amount ng binigay mong asset na in-exchange mo, yun yung magiging cost ng asset na receive mo. Okay? Ganyan yan. Kasi, as you, uh, kasi dito, carrying amount of asset given up. Kasi alam, on your own books, alam mo na yung carrying amount niya. Kaya yun yung ginamit mong basis. Hindi yung carrying amount ni other party. Ginamit mo yung carrying amount of the asset given up mo kasi may information ka na about yan kasi nasa books mo na yan eh. Kaya na? Unang order, fair value of asset given up. Kung magkano yung fair value ng binigay mo, yun yung magiging cost ng na-receive mo. Pag wala to, fair value of asset received. Kung magkano yung fair value ng asset na na-receive mo, yun yung magiging cost niya sa books mo. Kapag wala yung fair value ng dalawa, hindi yung carrying amount ng asset given up. Magkano yung carrying amount na to? Yun yung magiging cost ng asset na na-receive mo. Ngayon, pag wala ang commercial substance yung transaction, yung exchange, kasi dito dapat may commercial substance eh. Pag wala ang commercial substance, diretso ka sa letter C. Okay? Ngayon, let's go to subsequent measurement. Ito sa initial measurement eh. The, when, uh, initial measurement to eh. When you receive the asset eh. Ngayon, may tatawag tayong subsequent measurement. Now, subsequent to the initial recognition, Subsequent to the initial recognition, an entity shall choose either cost model, i-continue yung pag-recognize ng cost or revaluation model. Na itong revaluation model, meron to sa nga eh, formula. Eh. Pero sa intermediate accounting part 1 yun, eh, meron yan sa table. Yung revaluation, uh, tapos may revaluation surplus pa yan. Okay. So, shall choose either cost model or revaluation model as its accounting policy and shall apply the policy to an entire class of PPE. Class ha, class hindi to the entire PPE, but to the entire class. So, kung may mga kotse ka dyan, eh, doon yung entire class, uh, ano na ng kotse. Kung sa mga backhoe mo, o the entire backhoe, yeah? cost model. Ito sa cost model, after recognition, an, uh, after recognition, an item of PPE is measured at, at its cost, less any accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment loss. Oh, yan. May cost ka, di ba? Na-recognize mo at initial recognition. Then, i-depreciate mo na yan. Yung accumulated. Ha? And, bawasan mo rin yung any accumulated impairment loss. Yan sa cost model. Kaya, favorite talaga yung cost model. Napakadali. Depreciation ng any impairment. Anong depreciation? This is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its estimated useful life. Pero anong idea behind depreciation? Ano ba yan? Yan yung ba yung nadidegrade yung asset? Not necessarily. Ganito yung idea ng depreciation kasi maraming interpretation in regards to depreciation. Let's say ito, ito, ano lang, explanation lang. Let's say, ito yung truck mo. Or ito yung kotse mo. Let's say this is a PPE. Yeah, kotse mo. Ngayon, ito yung idea ng depreciation. Another term that is commonly used or that is theoretical to, another term that is typically used when referring to depreciation is deferred expense. Deferred expense. Yan yung ad, uh, theoretical other term for ano. Kasi na, nagbabasa-basa ngayon ako. That is the other term for depreciation. Deferred expense. Ibig sabihin, Binili mo na siya ngayon pa lang, pero hindi pa yan siya considered as expense. So, kailan siya siya nakoconsider as expense? Ganito yan. Ang purpose mo sa PPE is to, is to use that in your normal operations. So, parang napapagastos ka. So, bumili ka ng PPE, 
para gamitin sa normal operations mo. Then, para kang napapagastos your incurring expense. So, kaya nga di-depreciate natin kasi in-allocate mo yung deferred expense na yun. For the first year, okay, ito yung na-expense ko from that PPE. For the second year, ito yun. For the third year, ito. For the fourth year, for the fifth year, for the sixth year, for the seventh year, until sa mag-zero yan. So, yung theoretical concept yan is deferred expense yung depreciation. Ina-allocate mo magkano yung nagastos mo, magkano yung na-expense mo over that PPE. Yan yung idea behind depreciation. One of the ideas behind depreciation. Okay, one of the ideas. Kasi may, mayroon yung ibang interpretation. Pero for me, ito yung most, yung pinaka-plausible. Hmm. Kasi oh, deferred expense siya eh. Kasi you're using that PPE in the normal operations. So parang napapagastos ka rin na defer lang nga. And when you record depreciation, di ba? Depreciation expense. Di ba? Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So, deferred expense yung depreci- ano, yung yung nature ng PPE kasi in the future, dinidepreciate mo siya. Kasi nagagamit mo eh. So, parang yung use mo sa PPE na yun, yung usage mo sa PPE na yun, is like an expense. Di ba? Yun yung idea, deferred expense. So, additional concept lang yan. But anyways, yun yung parang sinabi ko lang to para maintindihan niyo yung concept ng depreciation. Ano ba yung purpose niya? Parang ganun eh. Deferred, uh, yung PPE, para siyang deferred expense. Kasi, in the future, kasi, because, ah, yung PPE, para siyang deferred expense. Kasi, bakit? Ginagamit mo siya sa normal operations eh. And yung usage mo sa kanya sa normal operations is like you're expending. You're expending, yeah? And yung expending na yun, is the depreciation. Hence, depreciation expense. For the first year, ito yung usage mo sa PPE. For the second year, ito naman yung usage mo. For the third year, ito. For fifth year, until sa magamit mo, buong-buo yung PPE mo. Ha? Huh? Okay. So, depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its estimated useful life. So, when we compute for depreciation, each part of an item of a PPE with a cost that is significant is in relation to the total cost of the item shall be depreciated uh, depreciated separately. Like for example, malaking makina, then one, yung isang part ng makina is significant, so separate mo yung pag-depreciate sa kanya, ganun yung sabi dito. Ngayon, depreciation begins when the asset is available for use, i.e., when it is in the location and condition necessary for it to be capable of operating in the manner intended by management. So, yeah. kung kailan ka nag-start mag-capitalize ng cost mo, tsaka ka magbibigin ng pag-depreciate mo. Now, depreciation ceases when the asset is recognized or when it is classified as non-current asset held for sale under uh, PFRS 5, whichever comes earlier. So, PFRS 5, ano rin yan? Kasi, may mga items ko sa PPE na instead of disposing it, benta mo na lang. Ganun ya. Ito, selection of depreciation method. These are various, there are various methods of depreciation. Example, sum of the year digits. Uh, tawag ito, double rate, uh, double depreciation rate, yung 200%. Meron yung yung 150% lang. Straight line method, yung favorite na favorite. Yun, meron tayong various methods of depreciation. Now, the entity shall select the methods that mostly or that's, blah, 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 that most closely reflects the expected pattern of consumption of the future economic benefits embodied in the asset. However, a depreciation method that is based on revenue that is generated by an activity that includes the use of an asset is not appropriate. So, depende kay entity, ito lang yung prohibition. Ah. Pipindot natin yung end part. Ito, straight line depreciation. Depreciation is recognized evenly over the life of the asset by dividing the estimate the depreciable amount by the estimated useful life. Ito, depreciation is equal to the historical cost minus the residual value divided by the estimated useful life. Paano itong residual value, sir? Meaning kapag dinispose mo na yung PP, like for scraps, di ba? Scraps, binenta mo sa scrapyard. Yung residual value, yan yung marireceive mong benefit. Ito yun yung sabi natin, benefit. 
yung residual benefit yung ano pag nabenta mo na yung PPE na hindi mo ginagamit ya yeah? sample ah uh, yun residual value pag ano punta ka sa junk shop benta mo o yun binigyan ka 100,000 yan yung residual value may na receive ka pang benefit from that PPE now changes in depreciation method useful life and residual value so ito Napag-usapan natin ito sa PES 8, di ba? A change in depreciation method used for life or residual value is a change in accounting estimate accounting for prospectively. Under sa accounting estimate. Prospective accounting means the change affects not only the current period and or the future period. The change does not affect the past period. So, pag discuss natin ito kanina sa PES 8. Now, let's go to revaluation model. Dito naman sa revaluation, kapatid. Ah... Uh, sabi dito, after recognition, kasi di ba cost model yung isa, dito sa revaluation, after recognition, as an asset, an item of PPE whose fair value can be, take note, can be measured reliably, shall be carried at a revalued amount, being its fair value at the date of the revaluation, less any subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent accumulated impairment losses. So, yan. If the entity opted to use revaluation model, then ito yung gagawin niya. But take note, dapat measured reliably. Kasi ganun naman yung fair value eh. Kailangan ma-measure mo sa reliably para magamit mo siya properly. If cannot, then stay to the ano. Stick with cost model, di ba? And pag ano, shall be carried that revalued amount being its fair value at the date of the revaluation minus the subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent accumulated impairment loss. So, ganyan si revaluation model. So, ito. Ngayon, syempre, meron tayong ano eh, yung carrying amount niya, di ba? Kasi, cost yung ano, carrying amount natin. Ngayon, anong gagawin mo sa difference ng fair value and sa carrying amount? Kasi yung initial recognition mo eh. So, yung difference nila, either revaluation surplus, either revaluation surplus yung mangyayari. The fair value is determined using an appropriate valuation technique taking into account the principle set forth in PFRS 13. So, gross of tax. Kasi usually, pag mag-revaluation surplus ka, tiya tayo yung 30%, pero depende na yun. Dito, focus muna tayo dito, revaluation surplus, gross of tax. Kasi may difference sila ganyan eh. Oo, kasi iba yung, sana yun? Sa initial measurement mo, is as cost eh. So, cost model. Eh, pag nag-revaluation model ka na, You the entity opted to that to do that. Eh ganito yung mangyayari. Siyempre may difference yan and the, that will be the revaluation surplus gross of tax. Ngayon, kailan ka magre-evaluate, magre-revaluation? Now, kapag yung item o yung asset o yung PPE significant and volatile changes annually. Necessary yun kasi volatile, eh. pabago-bago and significant yung changes. So annually, may evaluate mo. Ngayon, when the item with insignificant changes in fair value, revaluation can be made 3 to 5 years. Na sir, pag ganyan nangyari, revaluation model na. So, nirevalue namin every year. Sana may ni, ano yung, ano, yung increase or decrease. Profit or loss na yun. Kasi fair value pinag-usapan natin to. Profit or loss na yun. Ngayon, let's go. Oh, nagbalik. Revaluation applied to all assets in a class. Ito, nasabi natin kanina. If an item of PP is revalued, Then, the entire class of PPE to which that asset belongs shall be revalued. So, mga line of cars nyo, di ba? Sabi natin mga uh, trucks. Revalu- uh, Isuzu trucks, di ba? Lahat yan sila. Pag Isuzu trucks, L- or mga L300 na trucks, na kotse, na sakyan, okay. Entire class of PPE. Hindi yung entire PPE, ya. Entire class lang. Now, the items within a class of PPE are revalued simultaneously to avoid Selective revaluation of assets and the reporting of amounts in the financial statements that are mixture of costs and values at different dates. Kasi ba, yung isang L300, ginawa mong cost model, yung isa, ginawa mong fair value, parang naging arbitrary ka. Hindi, sa, gawin mong ano, simultaneous yung revaluation para proper reporting. Hindi yung picky pick yung masyado kang picky. Yeah? Ngayon, subsequent accounting for revaluation surplus. Revaluation is initially recognized sa OCI. Unless the revaluation represents impairment loss or reversal of impairment loss, in which case it is recognized in profit or loss. Na subsequently, the revaluation surplus is accounted as follows. Kapag yung asset is non-depreciable, like land, you don't depreciate land. Take nota, you don't depreciate land. Na sir, so kung if you will not depreciate land, 
Eh, so, meaning, every, uh, magtataas na lang yung value nyo every year. Ganon ba yun, sir? So, infinite na yung pagtataas ng value nyo. Hindi na siya bababa, sir. Take note ulit. You cannot depreciate land, but you can assign impairment loss to it. Hindi mo siya pwedeng i-depreciate. So, but that does not necessarily mean na hindi magbababa ang value niya. Yung pagbaba ng value niya is because of impairment. Okay, take note of it. Huwag niyo kalimutan yan. Land cannot be depreciated, but it can be impaired. Ayan, I mean, kasi non-depreciable eh. So, if the revalued asset is non-depreciable, like land, the revaluation surplus accumulated in, the, in equity is transferred directly sa retained earnings when the asset is recognized. Kapag naman depreciable yung revalued asset, a portion of the revaluation surplus may be transferred periodically to retained earnings as the asset is being used. So, ang magkano yung ito-transfer nyo sa, ano, sa retained earnings is depende kung ano yung depreciation method. Kung straight line yan, then yung revaluation surplus, transfer nyo sa retained earnings using the ano, depreciation method. Kung straight line. Kung anong method yung nagamit sa depreciation. Kung straight line, then yung revaluation surplus, straight line mo rin ang pagpasok sa retained earnings. Kung sum of the year, then sum of the year digits din sa pagpasok sa retained earnings. Okay? The recognition, the carrying amount of an item of PP shall be the recognized on disposal or when no future economic benefits are expected from its use or disposal. Yeah? The recognize, ibig sabihin, kinuklose mo na sa books mo. Tinaalis mo na sa books mo. Usually, itong sa disposal, non-current asset held for sale to or discontinued operations under PFRS 5. When no future economic benefits from its effective use, yun, cancel daw talaga yan. Ngayon, let's go to application of concepts. Na sir, pagtingin namin sa classroom discussion sa book ni Jesus, yung application of concepts niya, eh, yung club for classroom discussion is more on problem. Di ba sabi niya sir, na hindi tayo magpa-problem, hindi tayo magpa-problems. For classroom discussion lang naman. Oo. Hindi, pag, pag, pag exams natin, wala yan ano. Hindi ko kayo bibigyan ng problems kasi... Or ng problem solving. Ko, siyempre, bibigyan ko kayo ng problema. Pero hindi ko kayo bibigyan ng problem solving. Yeah? Kasi si Fasto. For me, let's focus on the theories. Para ma-orient na kayo. This is your introduction. Ano yun? Uh, ah, na-stuck daw sa bunga. I'm gonna feel the beat. Ngayon, ito. Get your calculators. Charot. Simple yung solving naman ito eh. Na? Initial measurement yung topic. Entity A acquires equipment on January 1, 2001. So, yan yung ano. You know, information on cost is as follows. Purchase price, gross of 10,000 trade discount. O yun, may trade discount and rebates tayo. So, 800, non-refundable, purchase tax, 20. Delivery and handling clause, 40. Installation cost, 30. Present value of the commissioning, oto. Present value of the commissioning and restoration cost. So how much is the initial cost of the equipment? So papan yan. Trade discount. So tanggali mo yung ten thousand dito. Tanggali mo yung ten thousand yan, kasi included. But that is a trade discount rebate. Tanggali mo yan. Tanggal to. So non-refundable tax check. Del delivery and handling clause cost check. Simply, that is cost. Uh, the cost directly attributable in bringing the equipment to the place and to the condition for it to be capable of operating, di ba? Installation cost, check rin. Ito, yung pangatlong elemento. O, check. So, add mo sila. 810 minus, 800 minus 10,000. 800 minus 10, plus 20, plus 40, plus 30, plus 10. That's 890. O, letter D. Oh, sa previous slides natin, hindi ko na, lang, hindi ko na yung circle yung answer. No? Sana tandaan nyo. <laughs> Ito naman, subsequent measurement, cost model daw. So, ang question, use the information in problem 1. So, yun. 890 yung initial cost. Assume the equipment has a useful life of 10 years. So, state, uh, and a residual value of 90. Yun, may residual value tayo. Entity, A uses the straight line method. Oh, simple daw. So, magkano yung depreciation expense noong 2001? And ano na yung carrying amount of equipment on December 2002. So, yung depreciation expense, simple lang, di ba? 890. Minus 90. Kasi, uh, tawag dito, residual value yan is eh. Divided by 10 years. 
straight line method. So, 80 yung depreciation expense mo per year, di ba? So, 80 yan lahat. Ay, Diyos ko. So, ang tanong na lang, how much are the depreciation expense in 2009 and carrying amount? So, yung carrying amount 2002. So, 80k yung depreciation per year. So, full 2 years siya, no? Kasi December 31, 2002. So, 160k ang ibabawas mo sa carrying amount. Ngayon, in this case, that is 890 minus 160. So, 730. Ito yung correct answer. Sir, hindi siya ima-minus sa, sa, sa 730 as uh, sa 800 para maging 800 minus 160 para maging 640. Hindi, kasi ginagamit mo lang yung 90, yung residual value when computing for the depreciation expense. Hindi mo siya ginagamit sa pag ng carrying amount. Okay? So, kaya 730, hindi 640. So, yan. Let's go to uh, tag ito, number to, number 3. Subsequent measurement, ito naman yung evaluation model kasi si number 2, cost model. Okay, use the same information in number 1. Okay. Ang tanong, assume the equipment has a useful life of 10 years and a residual value of 90. Entity A uses, uh, Entity A uses straight line method of depreciation. However, nung December 13, 2002, Entity A revalues the equipment. So, after 2 years of usage and depreciating it at uh, cost model, straight line method, Entity A revalues the equipment at a fair value of 820. There is no change in the residual value and the remaining useful life of the asset. Pero te, 2 years na yung na nagamit kasi December 31, 2002 yan, January 1, 2001 siya na be, nabili, di ba? So, ang tanong, how much are the revaluation surplus on December 31, 2002 and revised depreciation expense in 2003 in a subsequent period respectively? So, ang tatanong, magkana yung revaluation surplus for after mo siyang ni-revalue, di ba? From cost model, naging revaluation model. So, yung carrying amount ng equipment was 730, di ba? Then, the fair value of the equipment as of this date is 820. So, 720 minus 820, 90 yung revaluation surplus mo, di ba? Ayan, 730. Yan yung carrying amount. 820 yung ano. Minus mo sila. 90k yung revaluation surplus mo. O, oh, ito, yun. So, huwag mo na titingnan ito kasi joke na. Siyempre, solve din natin ito. Ngayon, ito yung issue. Ah, anong issue? Ito yung next gagawin. Magkano yung depreciation expense mo? Uh, depreciation expense mo in the subsequent period, so for the year 2003. Ngayon, yung magiging basis mo na ngayon for computing the depreciation is 820. 820 na kasi na yung fair value eh. Ngayon, ito rin yung changes. Diba? 10 years yung useful life. But the 2 years was already consumed. So, 8 years na lang yung remaining useful life. Diba? 8 years na lang yung remaining useful life. So, with that, diba? Acca changes in accounting estimate to. So, prospective tayo. So, 820 minus 90. Don't forget, may residual value pa rin tayo. It is remain unchanged. Then, the remaining useful life is 8 years. So, that is 91 point. So, lagay natin dito. Saan na yun? Sa so, maganda lang dito, 820 kasi yan na yung value, bagong value. Then take note, 10 years nga yung useful life, but the 2 years was already used, di ba? By the, by this time. So yung 8 years na lang na remaining useful life yung gagamitin mo. So with that, the answer is 91.25. So ito, sakto. Okay? Changes in accounting estimate to, di ba? Ngayon, the recognition Entity A sells, sells a machine that is classified as PPE for 170. So, 170 yung, pag, yung price na binenta niya. Yeah? Kasi sells a machine that is classified as PPE for 1,700. Ngayon, Entity A pays the broker commission, the broker, a 10% commission. So, 90% lang yung na-receive niya from that 1,700. Information of the machine is as follows. Carrying amount, 1,9,140. So, how much the gain and loss of the sale? So, 1,700,000 times 90% kasi ito yung 10% niya is napunta sa ano, di ba? Napunta sa broker. O, 1,7 times 0.9. 
1530. Ngayon. So ano yun dito? Yang 1530 i-minus mo yun sa carrying amount. Minus 19, yeah? Kasi ito yung na-receive niya, ano, total net ng na-receive niya from the sale tapos 19 yung carrying amount. Saan dito yun? Minus 1530, 370 ito. So may loss siyang 370,000. Kawawa naman. Loss yan eh kasi 1530 lang yung na-receive niya na cash na amount. Tapos 1.9 yung carrying amount, yung value ng equipment. So may loss siyang 370k. So that is ano. So anong gagawin sa revaluation surplus? Gain or loss rin ba siya? Hindi. Ilagay nyo yan sa retained, ah, retained. Ilagay nyo sa retained earnings itong 400,000. Retained earnings to siya. Ilagay nyo sa doon. Okay? So that is our discussion for PPE. Now, take note sa PPE. Ah, sa PPE, take note. Ulitin ko lang. Pati ko itong sinasabi para hindi kayo ma-discourage. Si FAS, tiris lang tayo dito. Okay? In-depth discussion, particularly sa problem solving, intermediate accounting na yan. Ang mahalaga sa si FAS, ma-orient kayo. Ma- ano tawag dito? Ma-introduce sa inyo yung topic para pagdating nyo sa intermediate accounting, familiar na kayo. Hindi na kayo mawiwindang. Hindi na kayo ma-shushuk like, oh, mahirap man to. Hindi. Kasi may idea na kayo about sa accounting standards. And with that, we will end our lesson. And before that, Saturday, Take nyo yung quiz nyo from the previous lecture video. O, Saturday ah, wala nang push-push yan. Then next week, yung short quiz din for this lecture video. Pero next week na yun. And bukas ko na rin i-upload yung, bukas ko na gawin yung ano, yung oh, Friday na lang siguro, rest ako bukas, charot, holiday. Friday ko na lang gawin yung lecture video for the Oblicon kasi hindi tayo makamit bukas kasi holiday. Siyempre, huwag tayo mag-meet sa holiday. Rest day yan eh. Grabe na may mga teachers mag-meet sa holiday, di ba? Dapat pahinga rin tayo. With that, goodbye. Love you.